Mixed Blessing System Chapter 776, Sages Battle, 2 While two of the three level 22 sages faced the fearsome powers of Elk and Annalise, the last was in a much worse situation. Surrounded by the three siblings of the Jansen family, there was no way that such a level 22 sage could resist three opponents of the same level as him. Even if this individual was already close to advancing to level 23, against the three siblings who had centuries of experience fighting together, he didn't stand a chance. Before he even tried to challenge the storm of blades created by Lothur on the outskirts, he was already suffering at the hands of those three descendants of Matthias. Using only their techniques, the three quickly made that man scream in pain as he got closer and closer to entering the space of influence of Lothur's bloodline ability. Noticing this, he shouted louder, enraged at being faced with this terrible situation. Damn you, Jansen family, you'll pay for the crime you committed by allying with that creature. The man found a way to say these words amid the wave of pain in his body. The continent will be your enemies, you bastards. However, the three weren't worried about empty threats like that. Lothur was about to advance to level 23 and with the strengthening of their group through this war, few could stand up against them. Feeling more confident than ever, none of the three gave that man any importance. On the contrary, they put more of their powers to use, finally throwing him toward where Lothur was finishing killing the two level 23 sages. Meanwhile, Lothur felt his characteristics improving, getting closer to the diamond grade. However, achieving this level of quality was very difficult. In a way, the diamond grade represented the sixth stage, a level never reached before. So the closer he got to it, the slower his progress would be, and even high-level bodies like those of sages wouldn't be as good for him to take more significant steps. With all his characteristics already at the platinum grade, Lothur wouldn't be able to make any qualitative improvements that day. But his EVF points would go up a little more. EVF 3,900 10,900 363 points added in Sue for 10,890 EVF Sue, 9,850 10,213 EVF, 10,910 Name, Lothur Ritter Physique, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger Bloodline, Life Devourer Soul Cultivation Level 22-23 Body Cultivation, Level 22 STR, 4200 con, 7297 dex, 4488 AGI, 4572 Int, 1599 per, 6280 will, 2899 su, 10213 EVF, 10. At that moment, Lothur looked at his status and felt the difference this improvement had made, taking his soul cultivation to the next level. Feeling that as the red mist around Lothur disappeared, Elk and Annalise cheered up, seeing their man getting stronger. The three elders of the Jansen family felt almost the same satisfaction, seeing that they were right to choose to follow young Ritter. This guy will one day reach the fifth catastrophe. One of the three siblings thought to himself, feeling reverence at seeing the emergence of someone with so much potential. Lothur was a hybrid, and no one knew how far and fast hybrids of demons and humans would go since, throughout history, no one had ever seen one of these beings go so far. But even though he was a hybrid, Lothur was still surprising the siblings, especially as his actions and temperament were unlike those described in other beings of his race. Lothur was calm rational, and not particularly bloodthirsty. What's more, the way he stole powers from others was also different from what happened with hybrids, something that made him less diabolical. Those three siblings didn't feel bad about committing the crime of supporting him and being supported by Lothur. As such, seeing him getting stronger, they couldn't help but feel good. Congratulations, Lothur. You'll quickly pass us again. Elk approached him when she saw that it was no longer dangerous to do so, ignoring the soul bones of those individuals forming where their bodies had disappeared. 
Annalise said something similar, and Lothur smiled, feeling that this was good, but it also had its problems. Now I might have to face another one of those catastrophes at any moment. He thought internally, seeing the great problem of cultivators of his stage. By leveling up, sages would already have it in their minds that they might have to face another catastrophe at any moment. But even with that in mind, he said. Thanks for your words, guys. But now we have to move. As he said this, he picked up the eleven soul bones that had formed in the surrounding area, few in number, but most of them of excellent quality. Not everyone had the chance to absorb many bones in their lifetime. In fact, apart from demon hunters and important members of Concordia's most powerful forces, most sages had less than four soul bones. Because of this, most of them usually had more than 10,000 years of cultivation and usually only absorbed their bones after reaching the fourth stage, when cultivation became more difficult and the bonus of the bones more significant. This was the reality of the strongest on the continent, which is why Lothur only obtained eleven bones from five sages that day. But with these eleven soul bones, Lothur obtained two emperor demon bones, seven monarch demon bones, and the rest general demon bones. These were soul bones of the highest quality. But once again, none of these platinum grade ones were a match for him. As he moved with his group away from that area, back towards the three Great Lakes region, Lothur told them. Of those bones I collected, most of them are no good for our family, Elk, Anna. Only two monarch demon bones will do for Victoria and Rebecca. The others will have to distribute among our people. Hearing this, Annalise thought of her mother and said. Lothur, can you consider my mother's situation? If you can cure her of her situation, she can certainly absorb some of these bones. Elk was silent when she heard this, knowing that Lothur had promised to see what he could do for the woman, but he wouldn't be so generous to Mabel as to not only cure her but also give her so many bones. Lothur looked at Annalise in silence for a moment, thinking hard about the woman's situation and the history they'd had so far. Chapter 777, Mabel's Punishment, 1. Mabel's situation was delicate. Not even four-star doctors could cure her, something Victoria and Annalise had already tried to do after reaching the fourth stage. But since Lothur had reached five-star and was probably the greatest doctor-slash-alchemist on the continent, the brown-haired girl couldn't help but consider the possibility. If he healed her and gave some of those bones to Mabel, she could quickly become a saint. Listening to his woman's request, Lothur closed his eyes briefly and thought about Mabel's situation. Maybe I can change some things about your mother's situation, maybe even cure her problem. He said as they flew back towards the Three Great Lakes region. But I won't give her a large amount of soul bones all at once. If she wants, I'll give her one soul bone this time, and the others she'll have to hunt herself or earn the necessary merit. Annalise heard this and didn't mind. As long as Mabel could control her own powers, even if Lothur didn't give her any soul bones, it would be okay. All right. That'll be enough. She said. Then I'd like you to leave this platinum grade bone for her. She said, indicating the one that would benefit her mother the most but also be compatible with Mabel. Lothur couldn't deny his woman and agreed, even considering his negative feelings toward Mabel. Mabel, you will pay me back for everything you've done. Don't think that it will be easy for you. He thought as he handed over the bone Annalise had asked him for. Then he looked at the Jansen siblings, the strongest in this state after him and his women. These three would certainly be of great help in their absence in Leopoldine, so Lothur didn't hesitate to give each of them a gold-grade soul bone. These bones are compatible with you and will help you reach the second catastrophe. Absorb them when we reach our destination. The three siblings took the bones and placed them in their spatial rings, very grateful to Lothur. But don't thank me. The cost of these bones and your next advance will be the surveillance of this state to keep trouble away, especially from the Ritter Motor Company. He said, seeing the grateful looks on the faces of the three. They were going to do it anyway, so they said promptly. We'll do our best, senior. We won't waste this opportunity. 
soon, they would arrive in the Three Great Lakes region, where, after a few hours, Victoria and Rebecca would return with the last infiltrators in Leopoldine, a group of 1,200 people. Lothur would have to wait a few hours before he could use his bloodline ability again, so in the time remaining, he ordered his two weakest women to absorb their new soul bones. Victoria and Rebecca received the bones from the monarch demons and then went into seclusion to absorb them, as did the three siblings of the Jansen family, who had started a few hours earlier. Meanwhile, Lothur ordered Elk and Annalise to go to Askin to deliver the results of the war to the people of that state and to give them an ultimatum. If they continued to send enemies, they and the other sages of Leopoldine would attack enemy territories directly instead of just defending themselves against invaders. Victoria and Rebecca were to go to Lentz as soon as they awoke, and he was already planning to travel to Utrecht to see the situation there for himself. But he would only do that after he had dealt with the last of the enemies waiting to die by his skill. For now, after giving his orders and seeing his women either begin their seclusion or leave, he went to Peter's city himself. It was time for him to take care of Mabel. Arriving in Peter's city, Lothur quickly distributed his remaining soul bones to his men of the Ritter family and the leaders of the Becker and Cook families. He then quickly searched for Mabel and found her on his property within the city, where he had moved after leaving the Frost family months ago. Mabel seemed to be cooking while maintaining a neutral expression and wearing a dress that accentuated her curves. Despite having centuries more experience than Victoria and Annalise, Mabel had a youthful appearance that would make any mortal think she was actually their older sister, not their mother. With a beauty that rivaled Victoria's, this woman was still capable of shaking the mentality of the men in this city, even without trying. But Lothur was different. As he watched his mother-in-law sway from one side of the kitchen to the other, he didn't get carried away by how beautiful or hot Mabel was. He remembered all too well how he had suffered at this woman's hands, how she had humiliated him and even beaten him. Even after all of this woman's misfortunes, he still felt she deserved to suffer a little more to finally pay for what she had done to him. Unfortunately, his situation wasn't easy. How could he punish a woman who was practically crippled? Besides, she was the mother of his women. He could do something without making his women sad if only she were whole and on his level. But given her circumstances, he couldn't even do that. When he entered the kitchen, he watched her for a few moments until Mabel realized she wasn't alone and jumped backward, knocking a pane of glass to the floor. Ah! Uh. She let out a small cry when she saw Lothur standing there before she sighed and deeply breathed. I didn't expect you to come here. She said softly, looking at the shards of glass on the floor. But Mabel had a conscience despite everything that had happened. As bad as she had treated him for a long time, she regretted it now and felt ashamed whenever she was around Lothur. Lothur sensed this, which made him even angrier because then it would be harder to justify anything he did to her. But determined to punish Mabel in some way before healing her, he decided to ask her. Do you want to regain your powers? Do you want to put your nerves in order? I can do that now. But the treatment won't be easy. Hearing this, Mabel immediately became more interested because what she wanted most at the moment was to regain her strength and start cultivating again. Yes, I want to recover. I'm willing to go through anything to do it. She said with a very determined tone. Then follow me, Lothur said as he walked to another part of the house. Chapter 778, Mabel's Punishment, 2 Entering one of the many rooms of the residence, Lothur stopped in front of a large bed and turned to Mabel. Take off your clothes. Hey? Is that necessary? She asked, feeling something strange in her being. There were medical treatments that really required one to undress. But when she saw Lothur standing next to the bed, she thought something was wrong. But then Lothur told her something important. Of course. My method of healing you is the same one I used to raise the physical characteristics of Elk, Annalise, Victoria, and Rebecca. Have you ever wondered why they were able to increase their strength so quickly, even before absorbing the soul bones I gave them? Mabel's eyes narrowed, and she became more serious. 
she had realized a long time ago that her daughters had improved their physical strength very quickly months ago. At that time, they had started doing things with Lothur that they shouldn't. Thinking about it, she blushed with shame when she looked at Lothur and saw he wanted to do the same with her. Are you joking? Lothur, I'm your mother-in-law. An engaged woman. You must be out of your mind if you think I will do this to you. She said, feeling quite offended. Really? Lothur laughed. This is the only way I know how to help you. Only by evolving your body will you have a chance to regenerate the broken nerves. Under normal conditions, you could enhance your physical characteristics by absorbing soul bones. But without the ability to control spiritual energy, you have no alternative. He said, showing the woman the harsh reality she was in. As he did so, Lothur let her feel his level 23 aura, something many times stronger than Mabel had reached. When she noticed her cultivation, she immediately realized that if he couldn't heal her, no one else could. How many five-star doctors were there on the continent? As far as she knew, zero. There weren't even any legends about people reaching that level in medicine. Only Lothur had reached this level. He could be bluffing. She stared at him silently, thinking the obvious. Maybe he could heal her in another way, but he just preferred to do things this way to humiliate her. Or maybe he couldn't heal her at all and was just lying to use the opportunity to make her commit a sin of no return. No matter how dead Aiken was, he was still her husband. To have sex with another man would be a betrayal of the memory of the father of her two daughters. Then Lothur said. When you recover, you can absorb the platinum-grade soul bone that Annalise got for you. I won't give you any bones unless you try hard, but I can't limit your daughters or you. Depending on what happens from now on, it wouldn't be impossible for you to reach our cultivation level if you recover and absorb the right bones. To punish her, Lothur needed her to agree to go through this. Otherwise, he couldn't do what he had in mind. Nevertheless, he didn't hesitate to undress in front of her and show Mabel the dragon that had won the hearts of her two daughters. Lothur was gifted. His little brother was the type that would have made any man in his position proud. As a woman who had only seen her husband's rod in her centuries of experience, it was strange for Mabel to see one so much bigger and rigid. She put both hands to her mouth to hide her surprise as she gazed at that masterpiece. Mabel didn't want to admit it, but she really liked the look of Lothur's baseball bat. In the last years of his life, her husband hadn't fulfilled all the responsibilities a married man had. He was stressed, weaker than her, and always busy. Aiken had gone years without touching Mabel intimately. He went to bed with her, but in bed, they only slept. Even when Mabel cuddled Aiken's little friend, it didn't awaken like it had when they were young. So Mabel hadn't experienced a lasting, pleasurable, intimate relationship in years and couldn't help but feel strange at the sight of Lothur. No wonder. The two of them had to deal with something like this. She swallowed her saliva, ashamed that she couldn't stop staring at Lothur's pair of balls and rod. Seeing her standing there saying nothing. Lothur used a fraction of his power and made the clothes on Mabel's body turn to shreds, falling to the ground instantly, revealing that naked, mature body. Mabel was as beautiful as Victoria in terms of look. But her body was even more beautiful than that of her two daughters, with more developed proportions. Her breasts were fuller, her hips wider. But like Annalise and Victoria, there wasn't a single imperfection on this woman's beautiful white skin. Ah! She screamed when she realized what had happened to her clothes and immediately used one of her hands to cover her sweaty little sister and one of her arms to cover the pink nipples of her breasts. Lothur! How dare you? She asked, even more embarrassed. Make up your mind, Mabel. Either you do this, or you give up on recovery. He said as he lay down on the bed. She clenched one of her fists still in her position, and asked. Do my daughters know about this? Do they know what you plan to do to their mother? No. But if you want them to know, I can tell them. No. She cried as she took a step forward, 
many things running through her mind. Lothur, do you swear that this will cure me? She asked, feeling that there was more benefit than harm in this. Inside, she felt terrible for Aiken, but her body and her instincts told her to go on. How could they not say that? A cultivator's survival instinct would always make them feel that the best decisions were those that would improve their chances of survival. What could be better than regaining her strength and absorbing soul bones in this situation? Besides, she had been suffering without action for years. Yes, I really can heal you. It won't be something we can solve in an hour. But you could be cured in a day or two, depending on your strength. He said looking at her hips and thinking about how hard he should fuck her. She took another step towards the bed and begged. Lothur, I'll do it. But I beg you never to tell my daughters. I don't want them to know about the sin their mother will commit. Of course. He said before he saw her take the last step and climb onto the bed, no longer hiding her body. Chapter 779, Mabel's Punishment, 3, 18 plus. When Mabel climbed into bed, she did not approach Lothur. With shame on her face, completely flushed, she lay down on the left side of the bed, no longer covering her breasts and pelvis but motionless, not knowing what to do. Even though she had done this countless times with Aiken over the centuries, Mabel felt like a virgin about to lose her virginity at that moment. Lothur saw this and admired her body for a moment before moving towards her. He showed no mercy and his first touch was to one of her large breasts, which, by the way, had stiff nipples. As he took hold of Mabel's left breast, he squeezed her nipple a little while she closed her eyes so as not to see what was happening. But even with her eyes closed, Mabel couldn't resist and moaned softly. Ah! Lothur didn't give Mabel time to get used to it, and in the blink of an eye, he had his mouth around that nipple, sucking on it as if he were breastfeeding. With his other free hand, he didn't hesitate to follow Mabel's forbidden path and reach the cave from which Victoria and Annalise had once emerged. Considering how long this cave had been closed, Lothur expected to encounter some difficulties on his way. But when his fingers touched it, one of them slipped quickly due to how lubricated it was. Ah! Another moan came from Mabel's mouth as her flower released so much nectar that the sides of her thighs were already wet. If Lothur were to look, he would see strands of nectar running down her ass and wetting the sheets. How naughty you are, Mabel. A few touches, and you can't stand it. He muttered, embarrassing his mother-in-law even more. But as Mabel clenched her jaw and tried to stop moaning, Lothur suddenly took one of her hands and led it to his little friend. When he touched that rock-hard, hot, throbbing piece of flesh, Mabel couldn't stand it anymore and opened her eyes while forming an O with her lips. At first, she almost forgot that she had done this to her late husband countless times. But after a second of holding the pulsating piece of meat, she came to her senses and ran her hand down the length of Lothur's little brother. As she pressed it down and saw the head of Lothur's little brother, she paid attention to its shape, color, temperature, and even its smell. As she thought about all this while having one of her nipples sucked, and her little sister touched, she felt a desire she hadn't felt in a long time. Seeing how interested she was in his rod, the young Ritter changed position, moving this woman's body quickly so she could do the forbidden things on her mind. There was nothing better than letting her fall into depravity alone. The guilt she would feel in the future would be far greater. Finding herself on top of Lothur, her ass in his face and her face in his baseball bat, Mabel hesitated momentarily, feeling she shouldn't. But when Lothur ran his tongue over her little flower, Mabel almost lost control of her own body and reached her first climax in many years. As her legs trembled considerably and she became much wetter, she no longer had the mental strength to hold back and stuck out her tongue, bringing it to the head of Lothur's little brother. As she touched this part of her son-in-law, she quickly began to lick it as if she had the best lollipop in the world, enjoying the sensation of licking this piece of flesh. But soon, she opened her mouth wider and put that long, hot rod in her mouth, making shameful sounds from her mouth and throat. Slurp! Slurp! Lothur sensed this and smiled, 
playing with Mabel's little sister while massaging those perfect buttocks in front of him. After a minute in this position, he wanted to fuck her more than ever and soon changed the position again. This time he had Mabel lean against the headboard with her ass facing him while she was on all fours. From his position, he could see this woman's beautiful ass and her flower, the perfect sight for men like him. Lothur then positioned the dragon's head at the entrance to the cave and pressed down on that part of Mabel's body with his rod so that she couldn't help but get nervous. Mabel had done a lot to her son-in-law in the past few minutes. However, when it came to this moment, she couldn't help but think about what she had already done and what she was about to do. From her point of view, getting naked with another man, especially her son-in-law, was already a complex betrayal. But having sex with him was a much higher level of infidelity. However, she decided to do this to recover from her illness. Once she was cured, she would forget everything she would do with her son-in-law in the next few hours and return to being a widow who honored her husband. I have lost myself, darling. If it weren't necessary, I would never do this. She said as she closed her eyes and bit her lower lip. Her expression was so lustful that no one watching her now would ever think that this woman felt so guilty inside. At that moment, she felt Lothur's rod enter her cave and couldn't stand the pleasure of feeling something fill her again. Ah! Another moan came from her mouth as she focused on the sensation of her little sister's inner walls being widened by Lothur's burning piece of flesh. But that wasn't all. For the first time in her existence, this woman felt someone reaching down to the bottom of her cave and filling every space there was to fill. And hell, as painful as it was at first, she couldn't deny the sheer pleasure of it. For women, the nerves that made them feel pleasure were located around their genitals. In this case, anything that could have the largest surface area in contact with her entire organ naturally increased the chances of her being satisfied. With a tool the size of Lothur's, Mabel felt complete for the first time, ecstatic to the point that she had already forgotten her previous thoughts seconds after being penetrated by him. As she moaned uncontrollably, she took one of her hands to her little sister and began to play with it while Lothur violently penetrated her. And so he began to punish her, taking away any honor this woman could have, driving her to depravity and making her do things she would be ashamed of for days or even weeks. He couldn't hurt her physically. His women wouldn't like that at all. But mentally, he could destroy her so that even his women would be in the dark, dot. Oh, I'm going to enjoy every moment with you, my dear mother-in-law. Chapter 780, Healing Hours later After some time of intense fluid exchange with Mabel, Lothur had brought her to climax a dozen times while blessing his mother-in-law's body almost as often. Each time Lothur had poured his fertile fluid into Mabel's womb, she had received the spiritual baptism that young Ritter's women usually received before they grew stronger. Due to Mabel's ecstasy at experiencing the ultimate pleasure, they continued their activity for hours, still dancing in the same room as before, connected in a way that no son-in-law and mother-in-law should be. By now, Mabel was on top of Lothur, moving her hips intensely as she squeezed her son-in-law's rod, giving him pleasure but feeling so much more. Meanwhile, her womb was so full that a yellowish-white fluid was constantly oozing from her flower, while she felt as if her belly was full. However, this was not a constant feeling. As Lothur's magical fluid filled her womb, Mabel could feel her body constantly absorbing it. As she moaned in pleasure, Thinking only of reaching the next climax, her body felt doubly good as it absorbed the unique energy in her partner's seed. By absorbing it while her body was breaking down what was in her womb, special energy was healing old wounds in her body while improving the structures of that body. When Mabel started that day of sex with Lothur, her constitution was 110. Still, with the blessings controlled by her lover, she had already reached 858. This had already raised her body cultivation from level 11 to level 15. Meanwhile, her soul cultivation had also increased by one level after her body had improved so much. Luckily, Lothur was now a sage, and he had destroyed the impurities that had left Mabel's body four times in those hours before they even came out of her pores. 
On the other hand, Mabel was fortunate. The control Lothur now had over his ability was perfect, and he could give his companion as much advancement in attributes as he wanted. Already knowing the limits of how far he could go without damaging the woman to the point where they would have to stop, he had given Mabel just enough. Moreover, he shared his energy with her, helping her endure sex with him indefinitely, which was why she had made it this far without exhausting herself. Anyway, with her improvements, her nerves had already begun to regenerate, and Mabel was beginning to feel better. However, given the severity of what had happened to her, only by reaching the body cultivation level of an origin saint, level 19, could she fully regenerate her spiritual nerves. As such, there was still a long way to go, and Mabel continued to move on top of Lothur, drenched in sweat, with a lustful expression on her face, with no intention of stopping. After years of not experiencing sex, a lifetime of not experiencing the ultimate pleasure of being filled by someone the right size, and the sensation of doing what she wasn't supposed to do with her son-in-law, she wasn't going to stop. Even if being with Lothur didn't make her feel any better, Mabel wasn't going to stop what she was doing. Having reached this point, she looked at Lothur's face as she moved on top of him and lowered her upper body. She hesitated a little but soon brought her lips close to his, feeling the sensation of kissing one of the few men she couldn't do that to in this world. M. While Lothur and Mabel were having intense sex in Peter's city, Annalise had no idea what was happening when she entered Leopoldine's neighboring empire to the south, Askin. Next to that brown-haired woman was Elk, both there to carry out their man's orders to deliver an ultimatum to the imperial forces of that state. Anna, what do you think Lothur will do with your mother? He and she have a terrible track record. I feel a little uncomfortable thinking about him helping her. Elk commented as the two saw the capital of Askin ahead of them, where they would arrive in a few moments. Hearing this, Annalise felt a little nervous but said. I know. I feel the same way. But I'm confident that Lothur will heal my mother for Victoria and me. He's much stronger than her now, and it wouldn't make sense for him to act against her. I hope so. She'll soon become stronger by absorbing the soul bone that's with you. It's just a shame that she has to start with such a high-quality bone. She could progress more easily if she had more bones to absorb before this one. Elk commented. Don't worry. Victoria, and I will find a way to get more bones for my mother. And even Lothur will do it. Do you think he'd rather give all his bones to strangers? She smiled. Even if he's unwilling to complete my mother's set rapidly if he gives her a single bone for every group of demons we kill in the future, it will be enough for her to grow stronger. That makes sense. Come to think of it, if Ms. Mabel gets as strong as us, we'll have someone trustworthy to run our company in Peter's city. Elk thought about it and saw that it wouldn't be bad if Victoria and Annalise's mother became as strong as them. She didn't think the same of her parents since they didn't have such high natural talents as Mabel. Mabel had become a transcendent decades ago with virtually no help from Lothur and only a soul bone she received from her Rios family. Meanwhile, that young woman's parents were only spiritual warriors before Lothur's help. Since more powerful cultivators relied more on their intelligence to move forward and protect themselves from things like catastrophes, Elk thought that Mabel would be a better protector of Peter City and her family's business than her parents or anyone else. While discussing this, the two arrived in the Askin capital, where they immediately flew into the main courtyard of the local imperial palace and landed there without any courtesy. Friends of the Askin family, we have come from Leopoldine to negotiate peace between our states, Annalise spoke first while she and Elk released fractions of their auras to draw the attention of their enemies, but without crushing or destroying them. Chapter 781, Acting in the Name of Peace When Annalise and Elk appeared in a courtyard of the local imperial palace, dozens of Askin family guards and specialists immediately sensed the enemy sage's arrival. The emperor himself sensed the presence of his enemies and moved with his strongest men, sensing that the end was near. Damn it! What happened to my elders? The leader of this state, 
a level 21, Supreme Saint quickly appeared Indiana this area along with more than 20 experts from his family when he saw those two beautiful women standing in the middle of the courtyard. How young! That was the first impression everyone had when they saw those two beautiful women, young but with a terrible aura that only the elders of this continent would have. A high elder of this family saw them, and, considering their words, he imagined that the family's ancestors had died and they were there to deliver the news and threaten them. This white-haired, white-bearded old man of level 21 clenched his fists and stepped forward. Ladies, are you here to take over our state? Elk looked at the old man and said. No, you're the ones who attacked our state with the idea of taking it. We don't behave like that, going into foreign territories and causing chaos. Everyone in the area remained silent, feeling the provocation of Elk's words but knowing they couldn't defend themselves. So what do you want? The Emperor stepped forward as well. He was afraid. But if Elk and Annalise decided to kill them, then he and everyone else there were already dead. Even if there were sages in this state who were stronger than their ancestors, they wouldn't be able to defend them against such strong and close enemies. Knowing this, the man didn't cower and kept a confident expression as he tried to talk to the enemy. Annalise replied. We want you to sign a peace treaty with us and not to attack Leopoldine territory for the next thousand years. That's all. And if we don't sign? The Supreme Elder asked, already expecting that there would be some terrible conditions for them if they didn't do what those women wanted. Then we will attack your state personally. Not only us but all our allies. Elk said with an icy look on her face. Everyone in the courtyard felt the sweat on their bodies freeze at Elk's words, knowing that if they were attacked by sages like her, they wouldn't even last for weeks. A single sage like that could bring chaos to an entire empire. Not only that but aside from the fact that they didn't have anyone from their family capable of defending their state, these men knew that even if they got some foreign support, it wouldn't protect them from these people. With that in mind, they soon considered signing this treaty with these women, who, by the way, didn't ask much of them, considering they themselves started the war. And as much as they found the speed of their progress strange, questioning how they had achieved it wouldn't help them at the moment. Talking to them about it would be terrible. Considering that talking to the church was something they could only do when these women were far away. But even that would be dangerous. Any kind of action on their part, other than submission, might result in counterattacks they couldn't withstand. Damn it. We're in trouble. While Elk and Annalise were in Asken, a few more hours passed, and Victoria and Rebecca finished absorbing their new soul bones. With her sixth soul bone, Rebecca reached level 23 in soul and body cultivation. With her fifth soul bone, Victoria had reached level 23 of soul cultivation and was still at level 22 of body cultivation. Both of them had become much stronger after absorbing the soul bones of monarch demons that Lothur had given them earlier. After that, and having Lothur's order to go to lengths, the two had already left the three Great Lakes region. On the other hand, the three siblings of the Jansen family had also reached level 23 in their soul cultivation and ended their seclusion. After that, one of them stayed in the three Great Lakes region, the others went to the capital of Leopoldine, and the last one went to Peter's city to keep watch for the time being. Meanwhile, the last of Lothur's enemies gathered remained in the Three Great Lakes region, waiting for the moment when he would slaughter them. While Victoria and Rebecca were on their way, Lothur and Mabel had finally taken a break from what they had been doing for the last twelve hours. After washing their bodies to remove the intense smell of sex from them, the two were eating in the house's kitchen, both very hungry. Lothur had supported Mabel throughout their activities, so he had also exhausted himself during the day with his mother-in-law. As for Mabel, she had never had so much sex in her life and naturally needed the nutrients from the feast she had prepared for them in the last few minutes. Mabel was an accomplished cook. She was very good at what she did, and even Lothur couldn't deny the quality of his mother-in-law's cooking. While he tasted a third-stage beast rib, he saw the status of this woman. Name, Mabel Rios. Soul Cultivation, Level 18 Body Cultivation, 
Level 16. STR, 79 con, 1251 dex, 82 AGI, 87. Int, 210 per, 250 will, 130 su, 680. Seeing how much her constitution had improved, he said. After we've finished eating, take a rest. We'll resume our activities in three hours. That should be enough for you to recover a bit. All that? Mabel asked, not intending to seem like she wanted to get back into bed with Lothur immediately, but seeming anyway. Lothur heard this and saw her blush as he saw the guilt in his mother-in-law's eyes. Mabel had done everything for him that day. She had even tried anal for the first time in her life. He knew she had loved every second of it. But because she had enjoyed it so much, she felt doubly guilty for everything she had done. By asking that question as if she were unhappy with having to wait another three hours to feel it again, she gave voice to the part of herself that wanted to indulge in depravity. Realizing this for herself, Mabel felt her heart beat faster and lowered her head in shame to look at Lothur. He smiled subtly and said. Your nerves are halfway recovered. But to continue your treatment, we must let the recovered part of your body rest and solidify with its new forms. That means we can't continue the treatment for another three hours. But that doesn't mean we can't fuck. He looked at her lips with a hungry expression. We can return to what we were doing, but it won't do your body any good. Gulp. Understanding what he wanted, Mabel dropped her cutlery on the table and finished her meal. She paused for a second to think about what to do, then closed her eyes and, in a single movement, appeared at Lothur's side, sitting unceremoniously on his lap. All right. If we continue, maybe I'll be better prepared for the hours of treatment to come. It will certainly help. She said softly before wrapping her arms around him and bringing her lips down to his for a passionate kiss. After all they had done, it would not make a difference to stop now. And as long as the treatment wasn't over, she wanted to feel that sensation for as long as possible. Chapter 782, Mabel's Recovery After a few hours, Mabel and Lothur were going to rest once again from their tiring treatment. By that time, this woman had a constitution value of 1,951 points. She was now at level 18 in soul and body cultivation, not far from progressing in both parts of her essence. More than 75% of her spiritual nerves had already recovered, and she only needed one more session of treatment to finish her recovery. Finally, while Mabel rested to endure the next session, Lothur communicated with his people using the Ritter Motor Company's communications network. Lothur, things in Ashen have developed well. The local leaders have accepted our conditions. Annalise said to Lothur, using one of the many vehicles their people had taken to different parts of the province to increase their communications network. Before Lothur arrived to join the war, the local powers had been using the possibilities they had to increase their efficiency in the brewing war. With cars capable of increasing the speed at which information was passed on, they had positioned many cars around the province, almost as if they were antennae. Lothur heard Annalise's warning and said to her. Very well. Hold your position near the border. I want us to have people in place to deal with possible rebellions from these states while we stabilize things. I'll finish treating your mother, and then I'll make a quick pass through the Three Great Lakes region. After that, I'll settle the peace in Utrary, and then it'll be time for us to leave. Okay, Annalise said before hanging up her communicator. On the other hand, Victoria, also connected, had heard all this and was delighted with Lothur's words. And you, Victoria? How were things in Lentz? Lothur asked his wife, looking at the other communication crystal in front of him. She answered. Rebecca and I had a few situations to deal with here in Lentz. Even though it's the weakest of our enemies, this state has strong allies. But luckily, we were careful and didn't threaten them too much. Their allies ended up accepting a non-aggression treaty despite the threats made by the royal family of Lentz. But we will have problems in the future because of this. I don't think these people will be okay with everything that's happened. 
Okay. Then hold your position for now. In a day at most, we'll get together to leave for the north. And my mother? How is she? Victoria asked a little anxiously. Don't worry, she'll be fine. In another five hours or so, I'll leave and let her stay in Peter's city to rest. Before we leave for the north, we'll stop here. You and Annalise can see her before we leave. All right. With that said, Lothur ended his call with Victoria and would soon spend an hour producing resources for his people while Mabel finished resting. At the end of that hour, she would show up at the training site where he had been staying for the last few minutes, looking forward to more of what they had been doing for over a day. So, once again, Lothur would take his mother-in-law to the pinnacle of pleasure, making her do crazy things in bed that would stay in her mind for a long time. Name, Mabel Rios. Soul Cultivation, Level 19. Body Cultivation, Level 19. STR, 79 con, 3304 dex, 82 AGI, 87. Int, 210 per, 250 will, 130 su, 680. After finishing baptizing Mabel's womb for the last time and seeing the classic symptoms of advancement, Lothura looked at this woman's status and saw her strength stabilizing at a new level. While he was doing this, she was breathing heavily, naked on the bed, soiled by the two of them, totally sweaty, and with her little sister so pink it looked like it was on fire. An expression of sublime joy was molded on her beautiful face while her hard nipples rose and fell with her breathing. She was exhausted. However, the sensation of fully recovering her spiritual nerves and having climaxed just moments ago was excellent, and she couldn't help but feel perfect. Looking at her, Lothur said. Congratulations, you're 100% recovered. Not only that but with a body as strong as the one you have now, any training you do will immediately give you significant benefits. If you want my advice, before you absorb the soul bone that Anna will give you, take some time to train your other characteristics. As strong as your body is now, you're not used to this level, and you won't be able to use all the power you should have. Train to resolve this and get the best possible result from the soul bone that Anna has for you. All right. That was all she managed to say before falling asleep, no longer able to stay conscious after so much effort over the last almost two days. Seeing her fall asleep, Lothur quickly cleaned himself up and put on new clothes, setting off from this place back to the Three Great Lakes region. Some time later that same day, Lothur activated his bloodline ability and absorbed the lives of the last hostages his women had collected for him. Having collected 99,000 EVF points, he converted most of them into soul points, raising this attribute by 3,319 points. Having also improved his affinities and resistances a little, Lothur looked at his status as he saw some low-ranking soul bones among the ashes of his many dead enemies. Name, Lothur Ritter Physique, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Bloodline, Life Devourer. Soul Cultivation, Level 23. Body Cultivation, Level 22. STR, 4200 con, 7297 dex, 4488 AGI, 4572. Int, 1599 per. 6,280 will, 2,899 su, 13,532. EVF, 21. Looking at his status, Lothur clenched his fists, feeling the sensation of getting stronger, but also eager to absorb his eighth soul bone. When he did, his attributes would improve significantly. However, None of the bones coming from some of the many bodies in that area were of interest to him, many there being silver grade, not even having reached gold grade. These bones wouldn't even be good for his subordinates to absorb. But sure that there were people weak in his forces who would be happy to have such things, Lothur collected them before leaving, this time heading for Utrary. Time to put an end to this war. He thought as he opened a spatial crack that would take him to that empire to the west of Leopoldine. He headed in that direction, 
arriving in one of Leopoldine's strongest enemy states. Chapter 783, Evaluation After a few minutes, Lothur was over the capital of Utrari, where he could sense many saints in the area, especially some supreme saints, something he had only seen in the north of the continent. He paused for a moment over the city and considered the level 22 and 23 sages who had recently attacked Leopoldine on behalf of the Empire's enemies. Considering the number of saints and sages that were here before, the northern states must have level 24 cultivators. He thought as he considered that despite the good level of saints in this place, the largest cities in the northern region still outnumbered this capital in the southern region of the continent. Considering that the density of experts reflected the number of sages and their strength, Lothur used the local reality to estimate the number of enemies he might encounter on his way across the continent. There should be a few dozen sages between levels 22 and 23 on the continent. But just over a dozen of them should have reached level 24. Beyond that, I believe their number can be counted on the fingers of one hand. Considering that he had never seen a sage with a full set of soul bones and that the tenth bone was usually the best, Lothur imagined that these sages with formed spirit bodies were three to four times stronger than level 23 sages. This meant that they were somewhere between level 24 and 25. As for the legendary level 26, the fifth catastrophe, if there were only one person at that level, it would be a lot so Lothur wasn't worried about there being someone at the peak of cultivation in the continent. Throughout history, no one has ever reached that level. The closest had been the demon emperor, who had absorbed the power of the seven singularities in the distant past. But even he had failed to reach that level. Even if Concordia's technologies had improved greatly from then to now, achieving such a feat would still be extremely difficult. Knowing this, Lothur ignored the possibility of an enemy of this level while he made a simple analysis of this capital, comparing the strengths between the regions. If I go north, I'll have to be careful. I think the people above level 24 won't be interested in getting the bone I could form, but I'd better be careful anyway. He decided before heading to a large palace in the city's center. Several local experts had already sensed Lothur's presence in this place and were standing on the outskirts of the nearby buildings, looking up to the sky as he descended as if he were a messenger of destruction arriving in this city. All the saints there felt a chill in their souls as they sensed the spiritual fluctuation coming from Lothur's body, which was not only a reflection of his level of soul cultivation but also the presence of the bones in his being and a little bit of his innate abilities. Different beings gave off different sensations. A snake would give the impression of an evil being, while a bird of the same level would give a less negative but strong feeling, like the wines. Even though he didn't have a soul as strong as that of the recently deceased main elder of this state's imperial family, Lothur radiated such an intense sense of danger to everyone there that the difference of a few thousand soul points did not make him weaker than such elders in the eyes of these local experts. I'm here in the name of Leopoldine. Lothur said as he hovered over the highest point of the building and looked down at the people there. I come with the word of peace or destruction. Make your choice. As he spoke, Lothur manipulated space, forming a domain around the palace, completely separating that area from the rest of the city. Seeing this black-haired person's ability to manipulate space, everyone there saw how terrifying this person could be and how easily he could destroy their capital in a few moves. Can he do that in just one move? The Empress thought to herself as she looked at Lothur, feeling both fear and regret. One of her vassals had asked the imperial family not to give in to temptation and threaten the Ritter family and their supporters. But even knowing that there was no proof that the creator of the Ritter Motor Company was actually a hybrid of human and demon, she had given in to her greed for what this company could provide. Facing an enemy who could take her life and the lives of all the high-ranking elders in her state, she couldn't help but regret it. The Empress then prostrated herself, touching her head to the ground as she humbly exclaimed, Senior, please forgive us for our insolence. We were blinded by greed and committed heinous crimes. Please spare us. We will no longer dare to raise our weapons against Leopoldine. The rest of the saints saw and heard their leader, and then they too dropped to the ground and prostrated themselves, knowing there was no alternative. 
without their elders, this state was vulnerable to forces with sages in their ranks. And even if some of them were close to advancing to the next stage, it was never guaranteed that one would reach the next stage just by being close to it. Even if all of them who could try to advance to the fifth stage managed to do so in the next few months, they would still be far behind this man who was staring at them this afternoon. As such, they had no choice but to accept their defeat in the war against Leopoldine. Seeing the reaction of all those saints and their words similar to the Empress, Lothur smiled in satisfaction, seeing the advantage of power and feeling how good it felt to be the strongest in the area. These people had plotted against him, initiated actions, and done things to destroy his image. But in front of him, they trembled with fear and couldn't help but humiliate themselves, fearing death and the punishment he could give them. He could kill them to show the world what happened to those who defied him. But that would draw too much attention. After all, this was the highest level people of an empire. If all those people died, other states would take notice of Utrere's situation, and they might inform their sages about strange things in the area. So even though they had conspired against him and sullied his image, Lothur wouldn't kill them. After easily defeating them, he would release some of his darkness and show them the path to liberation. From now on, you are my new slaves. Work hard for me, my people. He said in their hearts, easily dominating these people's bodies and souls, marking them as his vassals, just like the current Emperor Leopoldine and many others. Chapter 784, Fatherly Advice After dealing with Utrere and ensuring that the leadership of that state would no longer be a problem for Leopoldine and the Ritter Motor Company's plans, Lothur returned to the Three Great Lakes region. In the meantime, he communicated with his women around Lynn province on Leopoldine's borders with Lentz and Ashen. With everything settled regarding the enemies who had started the recent war against Leopoldine, Lothur called them back to the Three Great Lakes region to prepare for their journey across the continent. They would still pass through Peter's city to take care of a few things, but that wouldn't take long, and soon, they would embark on the most dangerous and decisive journey of their lives. Before they left, they would take advantage of the temporary peace around them to rest a bit and enjoy each other's company. A few days later, Lothur and his women were still in the Three Great Lakes region, taking a vacation as they prepared to head north to Concordia. But after a few days in this place, they had already talked about all their recent exploits but also had a lot of sex, from which they all benefited greatly. Meanwhile, they took time out every day to train, something they hadn't done for a while since they started fleeing their enemies or preparing for war. Amid this, they received daily reports on their forces, which were stabilizing after the recent opportunities for advancement provided by Lothur and the end of the war. Lothur had already released the three sages of the Jansen family to move around the state as they pleased, but at least one of them should keep an eye on the local situation to ensure the best for his family's interests. On the other hand, the partner families of the Ritter Motor Company were stronger than ever, and now virtually all the powers associated with the Ritter family had saints in their forces. Leopoldine's own imperial family had strengthened and gained new allies within the state, opening the way for Lothur's company to grow smoothly throughout the empire. Anyway, as the days went by, more and more positive information reached them, and they felt more and more ready to act again and strengthen themselves. On the eighth day of their vacation, Damon returned from his demon hunt with some of the beasts of that area. Seeing his father in front of him, but also some of the strongest beasts of the area, Lothur continued to cut logs for the fireplace in his house in the forest area. Damon had recently advanced to the fourth stage after working for his son and was currently at level 20. The beasts there couldn't benefit from soul bones, but with the resources Lothur had given some of them, more than five creatures of this area had also managed to reach the fourth stage and become saints. All of these recently advanced beasts were there with Damon, several of them thanking Lothur for the opportunities he had given them. Lothur, we'll do our best to keep an eye on Leopoldine. If demons appear here, we will act together with the local forces and take their bones to the Ritter family to decide who they will go to. A sizable red-furred monkey, level 20, said while kneeling before Lothur. After seeing Lothur waving to these creatures, 
Damon, his silver hair and beard swaying in the wind, asked. What are you going to do now? Hunting low-level demons or human enemies won't do you much good at your level. You'd have to slaughter many of them to get good results, but that would attract a lot of attention. Yes, I won't go after large groups of low-level beings. In fact, I only did it recently because it was a war, and I had a justification for doing so without attracting so much attention. Lothur said as he chopped wood with an axe. It was common for those who were sent to war to die. He had found an excellent situation in Leopoldine before and had taken the opportunity to strengthen himself. But Lothur had no interest in decimating cities and states to become stronger. Then he continued. In a few days, I'm going to stop by Peter's city and give the people there some orders. The Ritter Motor Company is mature enough, and I wanted to raise more funds to enter the neighboring states of the empire. With the provincial families becoming my subordinates, even if I reduce my stake in this company, I'll still have control over it. Would you like to order a new auction? Sounds like a good idea. With more resources, your company will quickly leave Leopoldine and become a continental company. Damon said, already aware that his son had plans to use this company to dominate the continent. After that, I'll head north. I have a friend waiting for me so we can hunt high-level demons. I'll take Anna, Victoria, Becca, and Elk with me and begin my crusade. I won't stop until I've completed every one of their spirit bodies and my own as well. He said, showing the beasts and his father his goal. Having expected Lothur to do such a thing, Damon wasn't surprised. But he advised him. Be careful on your journey to Demon Island. I know you will go there sooner or later, but don't underestimate the demons. I know you have powerful abilities, and you may feel invincible. But there are special demons. Remember, not all emperor demons are the same. Some only carry out missions outside of their country. But some actually lead their forces. The terror level of their abilities is completely different. Have you ever wondered why the demonic threat still exists even though there are powerful humans on the continent, even humans with full spirit bodies? Damon asked him seriously. Lothur stopped what he was doing to look at his father, who knew more about demons than he did because of the years he had lived at Fabian's side. I'll be careful. He said. Thank you for your concern. But I know how terrible they can be. So much so that I do not intend to go to Demon Island until my women and I have added at least one more bone to each of our bodies. Good. That's good. But before you go, find your mother. Even though she and I aren't together anymore, she cares a lot about you, so you should go see her and help her. Damon said. She will also be able to help you with information, maps, and much more. Fabienne is much more capable than her level alone would suggest. Lothur heard this and kept it in his head. Soon, he would say goodbye to his father and those beasts to join his women and return to Peter's city. Chapter 785, The Growth of the City The next day. After deciding to leave the Three Great Lakes region and end his vacation, Lothur gathered his women and traveled to Peter's city, arriving there a few minutes ago. Upon arrival, the three immediately saw Peter's city from a different perspective. Previously, they had been too busy to observe this city carefully and see specific details. But this time, they were carefree enough to see this place and notice the small local changes that had already transformed this city. Besides the obvious increase in the number of local experts in the city due to Lothur's help, the place seemed to be flourishing. The city's population of 500,000 had been growing steadily since the Ritter Motor Company began operations. Walking through the city, one could see construction in almost every neighborhood, and many facilities were being renovated to accommodate not only the vehicles that already filled the streets but also the increased number of residents. Peter's city currently had 640,000 inhabitants, while there were more than 7,000 vehicles in circulation, including cars, minibuses, trucks, and other larger vehicles. The Lin province currently has more than 13,000 vehicles throughout its territory, allowing anyone to send audio messages anywhere in the province with few resources. Meanwhile, 
another 5,000 vehicles had already been delivered to the rulers of other provinces within Leopoldine, especially the first two Ritter Motor Company factories. More than six Ritter Motor Company factories were in constant operation in the province, which could easily be seen in the city of Lothur and his family. There were already more than 40,000 people working directly or indirectly for the company, enough for one to notice the company's growth in recent weeks. Wherever you went in this town, you could see people wearing the uniform of one of the company's factories, the driving school, the toll booth, the provincial or municipal transportation company, the paving or signaling company, etc. Several companies were involved in the creation of Lothur, which made this city a kind of general headquarters for the young Ritter's company. Noticing this for the first time, he and his family couldn't help but sigh at how far they had come in such a short time. In a matter of months, they had gone from juniors at Morning Star Academy to owners of the city and province. But when they arrived near their residence, Victoria and Annalise immediately noticed their mother and put aside their city. Lothur said to them. You should go and talk to her and spend some time with her. We leave tomorrow night, and I don't know how long we'll be gone. Take the opportunity to say goodbye. In the meantime, Becca, Elk and I will take care of some things concerning our company. Annalise and Victoria agreed and soon separated from the rest of the group. Rebecca looked at Lothur and asked. What are we going to do? This woman was no longer wanted in this state, so she could show herself in public again since the imperial family had published the news of her release weeks ago. From the point of view of everyone in the state, she hadn't escaped from the imperial prison, but had been released because the charges against her had been dropped. Finally, Lothura looked at the green-haired beauty and said. Let's stop at the headquarters of the Ritter Motor Company first. I've already told my men that all the partners should be in the company today, so they should be expecting me by now. With that, they set off for the company's headquarters, the most beautiful building in the city's center. Meanwhile, at the headquarters of the Ritter Motor Company. On the top floor of this mirrored building, a large meeting room with an oval table and several luxurious chairs stood in the center of the area. At the same time, Pictures of vehicles and other company products were on the room's walls. But the place, usually empty and little used, was currently full of people, with representatives from all of Lothur's partners present. A total of 42 people were present, half standing, the other half sitting, waiting for the person who had called this meeting to arrive while they chatted among themselves. Half of them were from the province powers talking to each other while the other half were either from other Leopoldine provinces or from other states. They talked to each other, looking strangely at the people from Lin province every few moments, for they had suddenly increased their forces in the last few days. Representatives of the Becker, Cook and Frost families, and even the Morning Star Academy, had leaped from the end of the second stage or the beginning of the third stage to the beginning of the fourth stage in their cultivation. But as ridiculous as these advances were, only a few publicly known people in Peter City had received Lothur's help. Most of the people who received his help were the men of the Ritter family, who didn't like to be seen in public. Aside from these individuals, less than 60 people from these four local powers had actually received support from Lothur, aside from the powers he had enslaved, such as the imperial family. In addition, he had helped strengthen the Jansen family, but that family had been very strong before and few knew how much it had improved recently. In any case, the situation of these people was strange to most of them, and they couldn't help but comment on it among themselves. How did they do it? They owe us an answer. We're allies. We need to know how they were able to improve so much and still end the war that was about to take place. Yes, it was all bizarre. One day, we were preparing for war and the possible defeat of our forces, and then, Within weeks, some of our partners became much stronger, and war was no longer an issue. The people of this second faction commented to each other in low, dark voices about much of what had happened recently. Even though they were involved in the war, most of these powers, who were neither Lothur's subordinates nor close to the Jansen family, knew very little about what had actually happened in recent weeks. 
They knew that the enemies had lost important forces and were less bold and that there was a high probability that the war was already over. But the details of how this had happened were something few knew. Amid these muttered comments, the other group was talking about other things, but they all had smiles on their faces because the wines were blowing in their company's favor. We currently have more than 500,000 orders to deliver. Gomeric told the Duke of the Province, sensing that the company's profits would soon be passed on to its partners. Thinking about the amount of coins that would be generated and the ever-increasing number of vehicles produced each day, Chris smiled at Gomeric and looked forward to the future. As our operations mature, it will only be a matter of time before our families receive new advancements. As he said this, everyone in the room stopped talking as they saw the wall on one side of the room distorted, and three people appeared there. Chapter 786, Lothur's Goal When Lothur, Rebecca, and Elk appeared in that place, everyone was silent, especially since they weren't hiding their second catastrophe sage auras. But everyone there couldn't help but look at the young silver-haired man, who not only had an aura twice as strong as those two women but also had all the characteristics of the creator of this company. Those who didn't already know him, representatives of families from other Leopoldine provinces and families from other states, immediately realized who Lothur was. At the same time, as they recognized him as the genius behind this company, they all felt nervous because, given his cultivation level, he could only be what many accused him of being. A hybrid of human and demon. Gulp. While some trembled with fear, the people of Lin province, who were already used to Lothur, all stood up to greet him, bowing their heads without exception. Lothur smiled at his old acquaintances, seeing some he had recently helped and others he hadn't seen since the last Ritter Motor Company auction. But when he saw the surprised or fearful expressions of some of his newer associates, he quickly opened his mouth to speak about the situation. Well, some of you are new and don't know me. Let me introduce myself. I'm Lothur Ritter founder and majority shareholder of the Ritter Motor Company. Don't be afraid of me because of my nature and my powers. I won't act against you or threaten you. You're already my partners, so we're in the same boat. Anyway, I'm here today to give you some good news. As my wife promised, in a few days, we will be paying out the first dividend from our company. The first dividend will be worth 450,000 gold coins for every fraction of 1% of the company. This means that powers like the Becker family, who own 7%, will receive 3.15 million gold coins. Lothur said, gesturing as he brought smiles to some of the faces there, slightly changing the expressions of those most worried about their situation. In addition, we will hold the third auction of shares in the Ritter Motor Company selling 15% of the company. When Lothur said this, the people there immediately became more interested in it than in his reality. Many wanted to increase their positions even before the dividend announcement he had just made. When will this happen? One of the Rios family representatives asked. About a month. You should talk to Mabel Rios about it. She'll control the company when my wives and I leave soon. Lothur was sincere showing these people he didn't intend to stay long. Fifteen percent, and in a few weeks. It looks like the Ritter Motor Company will be without a controller. One of the people there thought he liked that. But then Lothur said. As for this auction, my family will only be selling seven percent of the company. The rest will come from the holdings of the Morning Star Academy, the Cook, Becker, and Frost families. I would also like to announce that my family has recently allied with these powers and House Jansen. Thus, we will still have 50% of the company's votes even after the auction, which will keep us in the control of the company. After Lothur's words, the representatives of these powers immediately confirmed what he had said, showing the company's partners that nothing would change in its direction. Only new partners could join them and more resources would be available for the Ritter family to expand their company's operations. Realizing this, some of those most interested in the auction became more solemn, realizing they would still have to abide by the Ritter family's decisions, even if they disagreed. With a majority of votes, the Ritter family could do whatever they wanted. 
even hurt their other partners. The strongest powers there didn't like that, so they couldn't help but be annoyed when they heard that this auction wouldn't change the problem. They wanted control of the company, but not only that, they wanted Lothur out of their business. Senior Ritter, what is your interest in the Ritter Motor Company? I doubt that someone of your caliber needs coins. Even though the company is huge and has a lot of potential, those coins would be useless to someone like you. What do you really want? Why don't you resign your position and take your family to live in seclusion away from all eyes? You could keep a minority stake in the company and still guarantee the future of your house. One of these men had the courage to say what half the people in the room wanted to say. On the one hand, it was a very sensible comment. On the other, it showed the ignorance of such a person, who had no idea of the Ritter Motor Company's potential with the Cook family's espionage. Only Lothur and the Cook family knew the company's real purpose, so many people looked at him curiously to find out why he wouldn't leave the company and live his life in peace. Lothur looked at the man and said, The Ritter Motor Company is not stable enough for me to relinquish control of it. As my creation, I want to see it rise to the top and become the greatest institution on the continent. I won't give it up until it does. His answer was good enough for many there to accept. Who wouldn't want their creation to be the best and most important in the world? Even if not everyone appreciated this noble goal, it was easy to understand. At the same time, Lothur's words opened the door to those who were interested in one day getting rid of the Ritter family at the top of the company. So even the least happy people in the room couldn't complain about his answer. Then, someone asked as the people in the room looked at each other, more satisfied than dissatisfied. Senior, where are you looking now? I assume it was you who stopped the war and saved us all, right? With that question, everyone who didn't know that Lothur was behind the end of the war realized that he was the only explanation for the things that had happened in the last few weeks. Not only that, but they realized how important Lothur was to this company, for without him, it would probably be in the hands of the enemies by now. He said. I'm going away to hunt demons with my wives. However, when I return, I'd like to see the Ritter Motor Company dominate at least the continent's southern region. If that happens, I'll give my partners some prizes. So do your best, haha. <laughs> He ended the meeting with this encouragement for these people to help him expand the company, which he felt was necessary for him to complete the system's mission. Chapter 787, Time to Go After leaving the Ritter Motor Company headquarters, Lothur would meet with the Cook family at the Ritter family headquarters, where he would introduce his women to his family's espionage business for the first time. Lothur would give the Cook patriarch, the leader of this operation, several orders. Among them, he would say that once this group had managed to spy on the entire empire and started spying on neighboring states, they should look for information about the seven singularities. Lothur didn't expect to find anything in the short term. Still, as the Ritter Motor Company grew out of Leopoldine, he thought that information about it might show up. Since he didn't intend to return to Peter's city anytime soon, this order had to be given now so the group wouldn't miss anything from the start. In addition, he would give several other orders about specific items, demons, specters, and about how the group should handle information about these creatures. Lothur would personally deal with these creatures on his journey, but he would not leave his people unprepared. After a long conversation with the cook patriarch, Lothur and his two women went to the estate where Victoria and Annalise were with their mother. Arriving at the estate, Lothur, Elk and Rebecca found Mabel recovered for the first time and couldn't help but notice how radiant she looked. Mabel didn't just look stronger. She looked transformed. The sparkle in her eyes and the energy she exuded were completely different from weeks ago when she was living like a widow waiting to die. Seeing this, Elk and Rebecca were a little surprised but felt that it must be due to her recovery and progress. Lothur must have given her a soul bone after healing her condition. They thought, imagining that this was behind Mabel's current level. Meanwhile, Annalise and Victoria were very happy for Mabel, who was now much more relaxed about traveling with Lothur and leaving her in Peter's city. Are you leaving already? 
Mabel asked as she looked at Elk and Rebecca, trying not to look at Lothur as things that shouldn't be on her mind were tempting her while she was around the young man. Hmm, we'll just spend the night in the city and start our journey tomorrow, Elk replied. Have you taken care of everything you need to take care of? Annalise asked. Most of it, Rebecca said. Then this is better left to you, Mom. Annalise handed Mabel an Emperor Demon Soul Bone, Platinum Grade, what Lothur had given her. You should train for a few days at most and then take this bone without further ado. As interesting as it might be to delay the absorption, it could be perilous. For as much as the soul bone can give you greater benefits the stronger you are, going without it can weaken you. Victoria advised, feeling that her mother had better absorb it as soon as possible. As far as she and Annalise were concerned, her mother didn't need to make much progress with this first bone they gave her. As their journey progressed, they were sure to get new soul bones. When they had more bones compatible with Mabel's spirit body, they would find a way to send them to this woman. Even though she wouldn't have a great bonus now because she had very weak characteristics, they thought it would be best for Mabel to absorb this bone as soon as possible. Mabel smiled at her daughters as she stored the bone in her spatial ring, determined to do it soon. I will train for another week. The results of my training have been perfect, so I want to continue. After that, I'll absorb it as you say. With that, the group there would soon split up inside that residence, each going off to prepare in their own way. Eventually, the night would fall, and Mabel would host a feast for this family, taking the opportunity to be with her daughters for the last time and who knew how long. Mabel was sure she would hear from her daughters occasionally. But even then, it could be months before she saw them again, something that had never happened until this day. In the middle of this special evening, she tried to ignore the sensation in her body because of Lothur's presence, feeling a little guilty after everything she had done. She couldn't deny that she had enjoyed every second of it. And her body screamed with joy, so much so that no one could imagine her great guilt. Even though she looked radiant and delighted on the outside, Mabel was in an unprecedented dilemma between feeling good about her pleasure with Lothur and feeling bad about betraying her daughters and her husband. As the hours passed and the silence of the night set in, she would have to try hard not to think about what Lothur must have done with those four women and also try hard not to get carried away by the sensation in her body. The next day, Lothur had taken care of all his women's needs the night before, while Mabel had barely resisted the temptation to try to watch them or even get close to him. Lothur couldn't imagine what his mother-in-law had been through that night, and when he got up in the morning, he simply ignored her as he went to the kitchen to eat his breakfast. Lothur thought Mabel was beautiful, but he had no big fantasies about her. He'd done what he'd done to her because he wanted to punish her, and hell, he could get as rough as anyone with a beauty like his mother-in-law. But he didn't want to make her one of his women, so he just treated her like his mother-in-law when he found her in the kitchen in the morning. If he knew how terribly Mabel felt for being so attracted to him, Lothur would actually smile in satisfaction, for that was what he was looking for. After a few comments among themselves and the awakening of his four women, it wouldn't be long before Lothur, and the four of them left to take care of their last business in the city before their departure. Later that day, they would make some recommendations to Mabel about the management of the Ritter Motor Company until it was finally time for them to leave for the north. At the end of the afternoon, Lothur, his four women, Mabel, and the most important members and allies of the Ritter family stood at the entrance to the family headquarters to bid farewell. Elk said goodbye to her parents, while Rebecca said goodbye to her mistress, Elizabeth. On the other hand, some important people in the city wished Lothur good luck, while the Frost family said goodbye to Annalise and Victoria. I hope you come back stronger, my daughters. But don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Mabel said before looking at her son-in-law. Lothur, take care of them. They're all I have. With that, Lothur nodded to his mother-in-law and looked at his women. Shall we go? With their confirmation, he opened a spatial rift to one of the northernmost borders of the empire. He was soon on his way with his women, finally leaving. Chapter 788, 
towards the Tyrannosaurus Rex. After leaving Peter's city, Lothur and his four women reached the Leopoldine border with Sasha, from where they planned to head north in search of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Arriving at the Sasha border, Lothur said to his women, From now on, we must travel carefully. There were no enemy sages in Leopoldine, but in the area ahead, many fifth-stage cultivators must be investigating me. So let's avoid using our sage abilities so as not to attract unnecessary attention. Is that really necessary? We're already so powerful together. Rebecca said, imagining her man being overly cautious. Yes, it is necessary. As far as I know, second catastrophe sages like us don't even have complete spirit bodies. But I'm aware that there are such people on the continent, including cultivators with diamond-grade soul bones. Is that serious? Annalise asked worriedly. Hmm, and then there are those beings of non-human races who can reach the peak of cultivation without using soul bones. So we have to be careful. No matter how strong we've become, there are still beings capable of killing us on this continent. Lothur said seriously before making a recommendation. Then hide your level of soul cultivation and change your appearance. It'll be better that way so as not to attract curious people who are interested in me. The people behind him didn't know that the human-demon hybrid who had reached the fifth stage was Lothur Ritter. But those beings certainly knew that this young man from Leopoldine was considered suspicious and missing, so having the women of such a person at his side without hiding their identities could become a problem. The four understood Lothur's concern after a few words from him. They soon changed their appearance hiding their auras, causing them to diminish until they reached the peak of level 20. The area they were going to had the strongest publicly known level 20 and 21 beings, so it wouldn't be appropriate for them to have a level 21 cultivation, or they wouldn't avoid attracting the attention of worried saints. With that done, Lothur said. Now, let's fly on our way. Manipulating space is something we should avoid. Saints usually only travel through the vacuum of space when they know the area ahead or when they are on the run. Hence, it would be weird for people like us to do that. They heard this and nodded, indicating they understood and would not manipulate space unless necessary. With that settled, they looked at each other and took off, flying at low altitude, heading north. Even though they were flying and not using their spatial manipulation skills to travel faster, they were flying at the maximum speed of level 20 saints. As such, their speed was not small, and if they kept up the pace, they could reach the entrance of the ancestral region in a few days. As they flew along the southernmost side of Sasha, Victoria asked. Where do we go first? You want to hunt demons, right? Should we start looking for them on the way? We'll hunt demons, and if we see any on the way, we'll take care of them. But my goal now is to find an ally I made before. I want to find him because he has more information about the demons in Concordia than I do. Lothur replied, thinking of the level 22 dinosaur. The Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't know anything about Demon Island, nor was he strong enough for Lothur to need him as an ally right now. However, he had been observing the continent for much longer than young Ritter had and had information that could be very useful as this young hybrid began his journey. Lothur wanted to kill some high-ranking demons and get new bones for himself and his women on the mainland before going to Demon Island. So, someone like that dinosaur could have a positive effect on his journey. At the same time, as much as he didn't want to deal with the leaves of the system in the short term, he still wanted to look for information about them in secret. That was something else the dinosaur could advise him on. Thus, even though he could hunt demons, Lothur wanted to find this beast before continuing his plans. Is this the beast you mentioned? Elk asked. Yes, that's him. He's been on a mission against demons for a long time. He'll be very useful to us. Lothur said. What about the specters? Lothur looked at Annalise. We will look for information about them, but they're harder to find. And I don't have much information about such beings. Thinking about these goals, Rebecca wondered. Wouldn't it be better if we split up halfway through our quests? That way, 
we'll cover more ground and reach our goals faster. The other three looked at Lothur and he said. Yes, we'll do that later. But I want us to stay together until we get a little stronger. When that happens, we'll split up to investigate more places simultaneously. Unlike him, the women of Lothur were utterly vulnerable to specters of their level or higher. Also, looking at the fifth stage, there were many level 23 sages on the continent. Since they were at the bottom of that level, he felt it would be more dangerous for them to travel separately in the short term. However, once they became stronger, he saw no problem with it. It would be good for him as well as for them. Aside from that, the group would continue to travel without much comment after entering Sha, quickly making their way through this state where no one would bother them in the short term. After a week of traveling, the group of Lothur and his women had completely crossed Sha and were already close to reaching the core of Rablus territory, one of the strongest states in the northern region. Since they had not faced any battles during these days, the group had noticed that several groups of sages were exploring the areas around their path. However, being stronger than those sages, they had managed to pass them unnoticed. As they traveled, they heard various rumors about the emergence of hybrids on the continent and how the coalition of sages had already exterminated one of these creatures and were hunting down the second. Except for the fifth stage experts, no one on the continent knew the level of the hybrid that was still being hunted. All ordinary people knew was that the battle that had taken place weeks ago on the southern border of Rablus had been over the sole bone of that dead creature. Only experts knew that it had also been a confrontation with the other hybrid. Meanwhile, the demon hunters had scaled back their actions against these creatures and wanted to destroy the hybrid. As a result, groups of demons that had been hiding throughout the continent began to appear more frequently in the northern region of Concordia. When Lothur discovered this, he was pleased, but he had not yet acted, believing that he could hunt these creatures more safely with the help of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So he made it his goal to catch up with this dinosaur before he began his hunt. Chapter 789, Worries A few days later. While Lothur and his women were traveling through the northernmost part of Concordia, his Tyrannosaurus Rex friend was in the ancestral region. After Lothur had revealed himself to the world weeks ago, he had met the young man's enemies to find out what had happened and what they would do, then returned to his mission. He had chosen not to follow the hybrid's trail, not only knowing that Lothur posed no threat but also confident that the other level 22 and 23 sages on the continent would take care of the other hybrid. As someone who was focused on the mission his master had left him to fight demons, this creature continued to focus on that gathering information and observing relevant groups of these creatures. He had heard what had happened between Lothur and the sages hunting the hybrids weeks ago, but he still hadn't moved either for or against the young Ritter. As much as he had allied himself with Lothur, he couldn't help him in such a complicated situation and with so many experts after the young man. But this dinosaur hoped that Lothur was well and growing stronger. Not only that, but part of his current job was to help this guy because, after seeing everything the young Ritter was capable of, this beast was sure he could end the demonic threat to this continent. So, while Lothur wasn't dealing with the threats against him, this dinosaur had been watching his enemies from his tribe's position in the ancestral region. The ancestral region was not only home to the ancestral folk. These northernmost lands of Concordia were home to countless races of powerful beasts, including the dinosaur tribe. However, each of the beast tribes in this area was special, which is why few humans or even demons dared to enter the area. Cycad, what are you doing? Why aren't you with the rest of our region's experts hunting down the damned hybrid? A level 21 elder asked the Tyrannosaurus rex lying on a branch. Elder Ranos, there are already more sages after this hybrid than necessary. Cycad the Tyrannosaurus Rex of the creator of the secret realm of Lin province, said with respect to the elder who was weaker than him. Even though he was stronger, he couldn't disrespect this elder and other saint stage elders of this tribe. Although he was a member of the species, he had spent much of his life away from this place when he accompanied his master in the past. When he returned a few thousand years ago, he had been welcomed back into the tribe because of his power. 
still, the greatest elders of this place had never considered him to be a genuine member of the dinosaur tribe. From the point of view of these elders, Cycad was a tamed beast and would always be grateful to the human who had tamed and domesticated him. His goal was clear, to fulfill the mission left by a human, which was completely different from the dinosaur tribe's goal of raising their tribe to the top. Thus, even though he had become a sage in recent years, Cycad still didn't have a very good position in the tribe, even though he was the current leader of the Dyrannosaurus Rex Legion. The dinosaur tribe was made up of various dinosaur races. Of its 20,000 or so members, just over 700 were Dyrannosaurus Rex, and Cycad was the only one of that race in this generation to have reached the fifth stage. Even so, the other sages of the tribe, from the Velociraptor, Allosaurus, and Gigantosaurus races, didn't see him as a reliable dinosaur and only gave him a prestigious enough position to lead the tribe's little more than 700 Tyrannosaurus Rex. But Cycad had no problem with that, and he genuinely respected the order of things set by his stronger fifth-stage colleagues in the tribe. I'm not needed to hunt this hybrid. On the other hand, the demons have been roaming the continent very freely. Aren't you worried about that? Even if they are hunting the hybrid as well, those horrible creatures are our enemies. We can't turn a blind eye to them just because other threats are on the continent. Cycad said sternly, unhappy with Concordia's current situation. Weeks after the search for the hybrids had begun, the group's hunting Lothur had become increasingly concerned, to the point where they had even begun to cooperate with the demons in their search. All of the demon hunters, including the low-level ones not involved in the current continental situation, had been called back to their headquarters to let the demons hunting Lothur go free. Hell, the demons seized the moment to go after not only the hybrid but also old targets, some continuing their journey to strengthen themselves in these lands. Aware of what was happening, Cycad couldn't help but worry. Sigh. This is a necessary evil, Cycad. As terrible as demons are, they are limited by the same laws that govern us and all the other races of our world. And in a way, they are a creation of our world. There must be a reason for such creatures to exist. But we cannot allow a human-demon hybrid to live. It is an abominable creature that heaven hates, and if allowed to evolve, it could do terrible things. The elder said in a worried tone, obviously willing to accept the demons operating on the continent to end the hybrid that his tribe and several others wanted to exterminate. To that end, he and many others were willing to sacrifice countless lives of lesser beings to ensure the end of Lothur. Once he was gone, they would return to normal and face the demons, their old enemies. But Cycad wasn't as certain as Ranos. Is that right, Elder? The demons are trying to bring the demon emperor back to life. If that happens, he'll become even worse than a hybrid. The demon emperor was not only a high-ranking being but also a symbol of power a symbol of what a demon with the seven singularities could achieve. If such a creature returned to the world, chaos as great or greater than what a hybrid represented could befall this entire world. Ranos made an ugly face and said. Nonsense. It's impossible for that to happen again. And even if it does, we have fourth catastrophe sages scattered across the continent, unlike when the demon emperor first appeared in our world and we've seen what a demon emperor is capable of. But we've never seen it with a hybrid. I hope you're right, Elder. Otherwise, we'll be in trouble. With that, Cycad stopped debating with the Elder and returned to silently observing his targets. Chapter 790, The State of the Coalition Meanwhile, the coalition of hunters against Lothur, composed of humans, demons, beasts, and members of the ancestral folk, continued to scour the continent for their target. Only a few weeks had passed since Lothur's appearance and the great battle for the diamond great soul bone that had taken place on the southern border of Rablis. Since then, Lothur's group of enemies, including those who had fought him that day and many others, had been searching for him. But finding a sage was not as easy as one might think. To think that it would be easy to find Lothur because of the recent situation Leopoldine had been through was foolish. That's because at least three wars were going on around Concordia right now, 
and at least two dozen young prodigies had advanced several levels to the fifth stage in a matter of weeks or months. As unusual as cases like these, similar to the women of Lothur, were, they did happen. Talented people appeared. Soul bones and the thirty magnificent items existed. When some of these individuals and artifacts came into contact, fantastic things happened, and rapid progress was made. At the same time, because of how fantastic these people's journeys were, there was usually a lot of chaos around them, and wars would easily break out because of them, sometimes leading to great massacres. What happened in Leopoldine recently was rare, but it had happened a few times in Concordia's history. That wasn't enough to indicate the presence or involvement of a human-demon hybrid in that situation. Not only that, human-demon hybrids had an unprecedented thirst for blood. Even though they were part of Emperor Demon's bloodline, they couldn't help themselves when they were around powerful beings who could feed them. They could even control themselves around enemies who were often superior or weaker than them. But against those of a similar level, they felt such a desire to devour such organisms that they could hardly keep allies alive. According to the common logic of the sages of Concordia, a hybrid should have devoured Lothur's women if it had anything to do with the recent incident in that area. For this reason, and because several events in Leopoldine were not entirely beyond the logic of this world, the recent situation there had escaped the attention of several of these sages. For these people looking for Lothur, he must have been hiding or looking for soul bones to continue strengthening. In this case, letting the demons roam freely across the continent was a strategy to lure this target so they could capture him. On the border between the Pethi Empire and Rablus, here was one of the temporary outposts of the coalition group, where a few sages maintained a position to relay information from their men nearby to other groups like this across the continent. Communication was an issue in Concordia. Even large organizations using high-level devices and consuming large amounts of crystals couldn't communicate with their people all the time. To facilitate communication, the coalition against Lothur had divided into two types of groups around the continent as their investigations progressed. The first was the actual investigators, who were scouring the continent for information or signs of Lothur. The second was outposts like this one in the Pethi Empire, where the men in the camp would receive information from their allies nearby and pass it on to other outposts like this one. This way, if one group found concrete evidence of Lothur's location, they could quickly alert all their allies and move on to the enemy. After the previous confrontation, the level 22 and 23 sages realized they needed numbers on their side, as Lothur was tough and would not be easy to kill. So now they wouldn't act against him without at least a good number of them gathered to deal with Lothur. To prevent deaths among them and the enemy from getting new bones from powerful demons, the coalition did their best to prepare to destroy him the next time they encountered him. But even after weeks of searching for him, with more than 40 sages of different races searching for him in most of the states of this continent, the group still hadn't achieved any great results. The members who remained in these temporary camps were the ones who felt the delay in finding Lothur the most, and they began to think about a dangerous possibility. What if the damned hybrid has already reached the third catastrophe? One of the three sages in this small camp asked his two partners, somewhat pessimistic about what they were doing. Impossible. This hybrid would have to devour several first and second catastrophe sages to reach that level. But recently, only nine sages of those levels died on the continent, and none of them were demons. One of the two commented, his feet on the ground at this frightening possibility. But he could have grown stronger by killing small groups of saints. The same man who had raised such a possibility commented. He would have to kill many small groups of saints, and it would take him a few months to absorb all that power. So it's not possible that he has already become a sage of that level. The third agreed with the second but didn't completely rule out the possibility. That's a concern, though. If he has the freedom to act towards his goals for much longer, this could become possible in the future. So what do we do? The same man who had asked the question questioned knowing that level 22 and 23 sages wouldn't stand a chance against level 24. We only have the alternative of calling the supreme elders of our forces. 
The strongest of the three said, thinking of humans with full spirit bodies and beings from other races who had already reached level 24. Cultivation beyond level 23 was tough, and not just because of the disasters that became more deadly, the stronger one became. The world had its limits in terms of spiritual energy, natural laws, and spiritual pressure. For someone to cross the barrier from level 24 to 25, or from 25 to 26, the difficulty increased exponentially compared to the difficulty of going from level 22 to 23, or from 23 to 24. The world had its limits, and cultivators suffered from different restrictions that prevented them from progressing to the peak. This became more apparent as one reached higher levels and completed their set of possibilities. As such, experts of this level were very committed to their seclusion and were not bothered by their juniors unless the world was under threat of destruction. Chapter 791, Reaching the Goal To understand the situation of a level 24 or higher cultivator, imagine a street that has a drainage system, but under certain circumstances, it could be flooded. For example, one of the drainage points might be full of garbage and other things that prevent it from absorbing all the water that reaches it. As a result, after a heavy storm, it might become blocked and unable to absorb the water. Cultivators felt something similar to this situation when they reached level 24. There was water or energy for them to absorb, but for various reasons, which they didn't understand, they couldn't absorb that spirituality to progress. Without someone to clean out the garbage on them that prevented them from absorbing that water, they couldn't move forward even though there was something to absorb. Not only that, like a flooded street, once the garbage was removed at one or more points and the drainage channels were cleared, the water could quickly drain away and no longer flood the street. In other words, there was a limit to how far they could go without exhausting this world which made each of these high-level cultivators much more committed to their seclusion than anyone else. Not just any situation would bring the world's strongest out of their seclusion. Even the appearance of a hybrid wouldn't be enough for these experts to come out of their seclusion. They had no way to absorb the bone of someone like Lothur, so hardly any of them would move for him unless someone like the young Ritter decided to massacre the entire continent. But these cultivators were the ultimate protectors of the continent. If someone like the Demon Emperor were to appear, they would definitely not allow the world to be destroyed or taken over by these creatures. As much as weak beings were of little importance to these experts, and most of the people in the world were like that, even the smallest insects could interfere with the fate of nature in this world. One or two stray insects wouldn't be missed. But if all the worms and small creatures suddenly disappeared, even the peak cultivators would face huge problems. The experts at that post knew that they had these elders as their ultimate weapon, so they didn't despair even if their group was delayed in finding and eliminating the damned hybrid. Anyway, if he gets stronger, the elders will interfere when he starts massacring our world. So we just have to be careful until he makes the mistake of alerting our elders. The strongest of the three said, reassuring his companions. Meanwhile, Lothur's party had finally reached Rabla's border with the ancestral region. Lothur remembered where the Tyrannosaurus Rex had taken him before. He didn't know exactly how to get there, but he knew it was in the ancestral region. Using what he had seen and felt in that place, he could use his one with nature ability to find his way there. So, the moment he and his women arrived in the area, he immediately began to search for information about the place that could lead his group there. After a few moments connected with the awareness of the special vegetation of this area, much stronger and more spiritual than what he could find in other areas of the continent, Lothur got his answer. Opening his eyes and rising from where he had been sitting, he said to his women. Let us move on. We'll reach his tribe in about six hours. It's not far from here. Are you sure he will be in this tribe, Lothur? We must be careful. This is the ancestral region. Victoria said as she worriedly eyed the area they were in. But that was the natural reaction of people entering this region for the first time. The ancestral region was legendary to most people in this world, and academies all over the continent spread the word about the dangers one would face if they entered this area, which was home to mighty beasts. 
the ancestral region was not friendly to humans. With several races that could easily cultivate to the fourth stage in this territory, even humans in this cultivation realm would have to be careful in this area. At the same time, even the vegetation in this area could be aggressive and dangerous to those who didn't know the area. Some beings had to devour others in order to survive or even become stronger. If they came into contact with one of them, even if a group like theirs was peaceful, they could still face countless challenges along the way. And even if they were sages and not saints, there were undoubtedly several sages in this area, and they weren't entirely safe. Victoria had no problem entering this place to go to an acquaintance who would be waiting for them at a certain point. But going to a tribe of powerful beasts without knowing their ally was there was dangerous. Lothura looked at his wife and said. If he's not there, we'll find people who can tell us where he is. In any case, I've been there before, so his men will recognize me. Rest assured, at our level, few beings would dare to challenge us, even considering the fifth stage elders who live in the area. Just to be sure, let's raise our level. In this area, people in the fourth stage would hardly dare to do what we are doing, so let your auras return to normal. They quickly did as he said, but their appearance remained altered. Then they flew through the area at high speed, this time using the speed of level 23 sages, moving so fast that the many living beings in the area didn't even notice them. As they traveled north, the trees in Lothur's path seemed to clear a path for him and show him the way to go helping him avoid tribal territories and fifth-stage expert sites. By doing this for a while, Lothur's party would be noticed by the ancestral folks observers when they were close to the dinosaur territory. However, since they were much stronger than the ancestral region observers, they could get close to the tribe they were interested in without delay. When Lothur got close enough to the core of the tribe to sense all of the dinosaurs there, he used his abilities to search for the being he was interested in, seeing that there were few sages there at the moment. Even so, there were some individuals he would rather avoid. Elk and Annalise, I want you to go deep into this area and look for Elder Cycad. He's the friend I'm looking for and is in his tribe now. Chapter 792, Finding Cycad Lothur said to his two strongest women. There are elders in this tribe who might be able to identify me. So you two should go to Sycat and talk to him about me. He will understand what needs to be done and will come with us. The two didn't question their man, and after nodding in agreement with what he had said, they moved toward the interior of the area where dinosaurs of various types and sizes lived. The area where Lothur and the other two women were standing was the edge of this tribe, where no one was watching at the moment. So, the three of them stayed where they were not taking any time to get used to the area. Victoria and Rebecca were naturally nervous to be in this legendary place. Still, Lothur calmly built a small fire as if he were in the backyard of his house. Meanwhile, Elk and Annalise entered the area under the observation of some fourth-stage dinosaurs and immediately alerted some beings to the arrival of specialists. Even though they were weaker, some of the first ones to notice them didn't hesitate and moved to prevent them from approaching the core of their tribe without first justifying themselves. Humans, stop! What are you doing in our territory? A level 21 dinosaur, the first to see them, appeared in their path and spoke Concordia's common language. That dinosaur wouldn't have used the common language if they were low-level beings. He would have used his own language because it was the duty of those who entered foreign lands to know the local language. If one didn't, that was their problem. But before sages, even this proud beast of his race had to show some modesty. Annalise and Elk didn't want any trouble, so when they heard that first dinosaur that had appeared in their path, they both stopped. Elk said. We're looking for Cycad, a Tyrannosaurus rex. We have business with him. Cycad. This dinosaur and other observers in the area heard this and were surprised because this Tyrannosaurus rex was a guy who rarely received visitors. Even when he did receive visitors, these beings were never of the same level or higher than him. They were always weaker beings who were part of his network of influence outside the ancestral region. For people stronger than Cycad himself to come to this place, something had to be going on. 
is this about the hunt for the human-demon hybrid? One of the elders asked, knowing that such a guy was shamefully not participating in the hunt with the rest of the experts of his level. Annalise replied. More or less. We have some concerns in common with him. Please, could you take us to him? We mean no harm to your tribe. We simply wish to speak with the elder Sycad. Sycad was not well liked within the tribe for his recent decisions, so if someone could help him change his mind, some would be sincerely grateful. The tribe's goal was to reach the pinnacle, not to be destroyed by a threat like the hybrid. So everyone who could be used to hunt the hybrid should be on the move. If someone could convince Sycad to do this, it would be good for the entire tribe, as another sage would be on the lookout to prevent someone who could harm this tribe in the future from developing further. With this in mind, the fourth stage observers felt it would be no problem to let these human women come into contact with Sycad. Wait here. Some of us will notify Sycad, and he'll come to you if he's interested. One of them said. They would not let two level 23 sages they didn't know into their territory just because they said they weren't there to cause trouble. As powerless as they were to stop them, some of their elders who were standing by to protect the tribe were already aware of the arrival of these two humans and were keeping a close eye on them. If they dared to invade the tribe or do anything dangerous, even if they were second catastrophic sages, they would be in trouble. Meanwhile, inside the tribe, Sycad was monitoring some of his groups around Concordia, who constantly sent him information about the demon groups around the continent. He had the location of 45 high-ranking demons, generals, monarchs, and a few emperors. In addition, he was personally monitoring the movements of the sages, who had left the demon headquarters after the deaths of the four individuals who had confronted Lothur earlier. But amid his observations, one of his subordinates suddenly rushed into his cave. Boss. Fifth stage humans have just arrived at the tribe and are looking for you. A fourth stage Tyrannosaurus Rex entered the place where Sycad was standing, having rushed there after being told by one of the elders that he had encountered Elk and Annalise a few moments ago. Upon hearing this, Sycad took his eyes off whatever he had been doing lately and looked at his man strangely. Human sages. He asked himself, a look of doubt forming on his dinosaur face. What are you talking about? Why would humans of that level come to me? Boss, two human women arrived in our territory a few moments ago, claiming to have something to discuss with you. One of them said that she had concerns in common with you. That creature with the dark scales said. Common concerns. Sycad wondered. The sage's concern at the moment was the existence of the hybrid, Lothur. But he wasn't worried about that. What worried him was the rise of the demon emperor. Thinking about that. He narrowed his eyes, wondering if these human women had confused his concerns or if they were worried about the demons moving freely across the continent. Did they say their names? Where are they? He asked with interest as he put aside what he was doing, curious to come face to face with these human women. No. But they are standing on the south side of the tribe. The elders who were watching that area stopped them there. Okay, I'll go to them. He said as he took the lead from his man and moved quickly. As his leader moved, this fourth stage Tyrannosaurus Rex shouted. But be careful, boss. They're second catastrophe sages. Sycad heard this, but more curious than worried, he made his way south of his tribe's territory, eager to meet these humans who were after him. Given his speed, Sycad would reach the place where Annalise and Elk were waiting for him in less than ten minutes seeing two women of Lothur but not recognizing them, as the difference in level in their favor allowed them to hide certain features on their bodies. Elder Sycad, it's good to finally meet you. Chapter 793, Meeting Listening to Elk, Sycad narrowed his eyes, seeing this woman and the other woman for the first time. But from that woman's words, she had already heard about him from someone else. How do you know me, miss? He asked as the surrounding onlookers continued to observe them. We have a mutual friend, someone who is concerned about the demons on the continent, Annalise said before asking. Elder, 
Do you have somewhere we can talk in private? Demons. He was surprised to hear that these people were there on behalf of someone with similar concerns to his own. He already knew they had said they had similar concerns to his, but he was still surprised. After all, who among his acquaintances could be worried about the demons on the continent now? With a fifth stage hybrid loose, he was obviously the center of attention. And how could he not be? A hybrid was terrifying, even if it wasn't at the fifth stage. Sycad himself hadn't disobeyed his master's orders because he knew that Lothur was different from the others. But he understood the concern of the experts on this continent, who knew nothing of this young man and thought only of the terror that such a being could represent. So, to find someone other than himself concerned about demons amid the hybrid threat was somewhat unexpected to Sycad. Who would this person be? He asked himself, but being full of curiosity, he said. But of course. Please accompany me. He led the two to his area within the tribe, where he and the Duranosaurus Rex trained and maintained their operations. This place was a little far away from where most of the dinosaurs in this tribe lived, but that was exactly why it was the perfect place for him to go and talk to these two. No elders would bother them there. As they moved on, the elders who had stayed behind in the area where Annalise and Elk had been stopped couldn't help but sigh in disappointment at not being able to listen to their conversation anymore. So? Who exactly told you about me? I can't think of anyone with similar concerns to mine. Sycad said after they entered an area where he knew not even the strongest elder of his tribe would be able to hear their conversation. He had thought of Lothur's name on the way to this place. But in his opinion, the young hybrid would not trust others with the truth about himself. That would be very dangerous. Somewhat curious about who could have sent these women to this place, he couldn't help but wonder about their identity. We are here for Lothur. Elk wrote this in the sand before quickly erasing it with her feet. What? Sycat shouted, not expecting Lothur to trust humans. He and the rest of our group await you outside the dinosaur tribe. We're ready to unite against the demons around Concordia. Annalise said, making the creature look at her with wide open eyes and mouth. Gulp. Are you serious? Who exactly are you? He asked doubtfully, not expecting Lothur to have such powerful companions. We are his women, Elk said proudly. Oh? But you're already on that level. How did that happen? Did he trust you even when he was weaker? This guy had no idea that Lothur could make his women stronger. So, the idea that they had become stronger because of this hybrid was very strange to him, and he could only imagine that they were already strong before they met the young Ritter. But that would be extremely strange because these women still had room in their spirit bodies, and surely the bone that Lothur could generate would be precious to them. He strengthened us when we were weaker than he, Elk said surprising the beast. Annalise didn't mind the dinosaur's surprised expression and asked. But then, Elder Sycad, what will you do now? He wants to hunt demons so that we can increase the number of soul bones in our bodies. When we get stronger, we'll search for the demons' headquarters. Upon hearing this, Sycad left his state of surprise, shook his head, and then focused on what was right before him. Take me to him. I have the location of some demons that can easily give him the strength to become more powerful and relevant soul bones. He said, a little anxious to join Lothur and begin the hunt of his master's enemies. If these women were at level 23, Lothur must be at that level or higher. This Tyrannosaurus Rex couldn't help but be eager to join this group to hunt demons. With them, he could quickly put an end to the lives of many demons relevant to the demon emperor's plans. On the other hand, Sycad knew how Lothur could absorb the characteristics of his enemies, having seen the young man do it to the monarch demon he had vanquished in the labyrinth of the final level of the Immortals' Well. This dinosaur knew that not only could he help Lothur obtain soul bones, but he could also help him increase his affinities, resistances, and the quality of his bones, which would strengthen the young Ritter even if such a young man didn't absorb any of them. With that in mind, he wanted to see Lothur as soon as possible. 
Hearing this and seeing how excited that old beast seemed to be to see Lothur, Elk and Annalise smiled, and one of them said. Let's go see him. He and the rest of our group are waiting for us nearby. Are there more of you? Sycad asked. Yes, there are four of us, Elk said, pleasing the beast by imagining the small battalion Lothur had created. He has done well. Gathering these women and strengthening them was a masterstroke. Now he has very reliable helpers. He imagined that Lothur had brought them to his side to prepare for the future and not for other things. With that said, the three of them quickly left this part of the dinosaur tribe and returned to where Elk and Annalise had separated from the rest of their group. When they got there, Sycad smiled with satisfaction at seeing the young Ritter after weeks of worrying, seeing how much stronger the boy had become in such a short time. Haha, you look better than I thought. He said as he approached Lothur and the two women standing anxiously near the blonde young man sitting on the ground. Chapter 794, Destinations When he saw Lothur again, Sycad breathed a long sigh of relief, feeling better after the weeks of worry he'd had. If Lothur had died, he would have lost an important ally in the fight against the demons, someone who not only shared the same goal as him but also had great talent. As much as Sycad didn't move to help Lothur, he worried and thought about what his ally should be, hoping that one day he would return so they could continue their hunt. Looking at Lothur, the dinosaur couldn't help but smile. Hmm, it's good to see you again, Sycad. Lothur got up from where he was while Rebecca and Victoria looked at this huge creature before them, seeing the ally their man had made. Well, I'm here to do what I promised. Are you ready to hunt demons? Lothur asked, eager to get started. Sycad said excitedly. Of course I am. I've been looking for this for longer than you can imagine, young man. I have the location of several groups of demons, including some high-ranking ones who can even help you with useful soul bones for you or your women. Lothur's eyes lit up, and he asked. Where are they? I'd like to hunt them down right now. I understand your haste, but we can't do that, Sycad explained. My friend, some human sages are letting demons loose on the continent so that you will make the mistake of hunting them down to strengthen yourself. If we go after the strongest ones at the beginning of our journey, we'll not only attract the attention of all the demons around Concordia but also the humans and high-level beasts who are looking for you. A hybrid could strengthen itself by devouring the bodies of living creatures, using resources like humans and beasts, and absorbing soul bones. Therefore, there was nothing better for such beings to use to strengthen themselves than demons. Thus, the sages of the continent searching for Lothur's tracks ignored the demons' movements to force him to show himself when hunting these creatures. Knowing how tempting these creatures could be to someone with space in their spirit body, Lothur's enemies kept an eye out for some high-level demons that roamed the continent. Oh. Lothur wasn't shocked to hear this, as it was a strategy that made perfect sense to the group hunting him. Then what can we do? If we can't hunt them, what can we do? Rebecca asked. But then Sycad smiled. Who said we can't hunt them? I just said we can't start with the strongest ones that are being watched the most. However, Several other demons of lesser rank and cultivation are currently operating around the continent without being observed. I have the location of several of them, which we can use to strengthen him a bit more and better prepare for the ones that really matter. He said, pointing at Lothur. Lothur understood this Tyrannosaurus Rex's plan and didn't think it was a bad one. Even if he couldn't absorb the soul bones that these less relevant demons would produce, he could still strengthen himself with them which was better than nothing. But Sycad, I'd like to ask you to help me find someone as well. He said, remembering what he had discussed with his father before leaving the Three Great Lakes region. I want to find my mother. She helped me, and maybe because of her, I'm still alive. Hence, I want to find her and help her. Sycad hated demons and obviously wanted this race to end. But as much as he disliked Lothur's compassion for one of these demons, he couldn't help but like his request. Lothur was a hybrid of human and demon, beings usually known for their cruelty, 
usually capable of devouring their own parents when they reached a certain level. So young Ritter's compassion and concern for Fabian's well-being was a better sign than it might seem. It confirmed that he was different from the other hybrids. Even though he would have preferred to eliminate all demons, Sycad accepted Lothur's request. I can help you with that. I may already have her location. I just need her information to find this if one could change one's appearance or hide one's aura. After hearing this, Sycad promised Lothur to give him a result as out. Hmm. Lothur nodded before telling him what Fabienne was like, about her level and her aura, things that could not be changed even if one could change one's appearance or hide one's aura. After hearing this, Sycad promised Lothur to give him a result as soon as possible. However, since this depended on his men finding out for him, it would still be a few days before they would know if they had her location. In any case, even if they didn't have her, Sycad promised to help Lothur find her, and as soon as he had the information, he would help him get to Fabian safely. Once that was settled, they decided to leave this demon-free area to finally begin their journey. Lothur added another important point to his plans in the middle of their movement. I also want to take care of the specters. He said to the dinosaur as he ran through the forest alongside the creature and the four women. Remember I said specters were after my weapon. Yes, you mentioned a castle of shadows. Well, I want to deal with that problem as well. Specters and demons are side by side, pursuing the same goal. If we're going to fight one, we have to deal with the other, or nothing will come of it. Lothur said seriously. Then I want your people to search for at least fourth stage specters. I want to use them to get to the strongest of these forces and find their headquarters. All right, Sycad said. Finding information about this castle and high-level specters would be difficult. But finding traces of fourth stage beings wouldn't be so complicated. Since Lothur had a weapon capable of destroying them and was already at the fifth stage, Sycad wasn't afraid of the specters the young hybrid would face. Certainly, the creatures Lothur wanted to deal with were within his reach, which meant that the risks for him would be less now than they would have been before the young Ritter reached the fifth stage. So they continued south, heading for the first of Sycad's targets, a group of low-level fourth-stage demons that were not being watched by either humans or demons. But as they moved, a group of beings from the ancestral region were already following in their footsteps, silently stalking them. Chapter 795, Sudden Battle After flying through the ancestral region with his women and Sycad for some time, Lothur suddenly felt something and stopped moving. Not expecting this, his five companions continued to fly for a few meters until they stopped when they saw that he had stopped. Lothur. Annalise muttered, not understanding her husband. But when Sycad opened his mouth to ask, Lothur's face suddenly twisted and his aura became ten times darker. What do you think you're doing? Get out of where you are. With a loud shout, Lothur sent shivers down the spines of all beings below his level for dozens of kilometers while thunder rumbled not far away. At the same time, the spiritual energy in the area concentrated around him as five individuals appeared and flew towards him at high speed, being pulled against their will. Aeoic. Shit. He's got us. The five shouted in surprise, losing their camouflaged positions around the area as they felt the power of Lothur's gravity. Lothur was so strong with his soul bones that only a handful of level 23 sages or a level 24 sage could currently face him. With a great will that few on the continent could match, he could influence almost any being that stood in his way. As the five were drawn to Lothur, his eyes lit up. Before firing a laser of power, he spread the corrosive energy of his latest skill through the surrounding spiritual energy. The strongest of the five, level 23, noticed this and opened his eyes wide as he saw the death of this intruder's powers. Damn it! If this hits us, we're finished. He thought as he used his own powers to try to reverse the situation. As he flew towards Lothur, the strongest of the five suddenly grabbed the air as if it were cloth supporting himself and escaping the gravitational pull of his opponent. Reverse the world. 
He opened his mouth and shouted as his hands glowed, and he continued to hold the air as if it were cloth. Immediately after the first few moments of that pointy-eared guy's loud scream, the surrounding space moved, and everyone in the area saw something incredible. What? Victoria shouted as she saw the sky and earth invert while the world seemed to have suddenly stopped functioning properly and turned upside down. Lothur felt it, losing control of all his targets. Tisk. Frowning, he clenched his fists and didn't hesitate to activate another of his abilities, using something that would work even if his senses weren't working perfectly. Storm. A cyclone of wind arose around him, quickly forming blades of air and energy that sliced through the surroundings as if they were nothing, destroying trees, rocks, and everything in their path. But before this destructive attack could threaten the lives of those individuals, the second strongest of the group of five moved to attack, throwing a punch into the air so hard that space itself began to crack. Crack. If you were demons, that would be a great skill. Lothur thought to himself as he watched the blades of his storm break in half while space vibrated so strongly that none of those blades could destroy anything else after that blow. In the midst of this, Sykad finally came out of his initial state of shock to see what Lothur had noticed in the surroundings and started fighting. When he noticed members of the ancestral folk there, he broke into a cold sweat and shouted. Stop it! Stop it! We're not enemies! You're not? That crazy man almost killed us a moment ago. One of the five, a beautiful level 22 woman, shouted at the Tyrannosaurus Rex while pointing at Lothur. She didn't like to admit her inferiority to others. But this human had so much power that even she, a noble of the ancestral folk who had already reached the fifth stage, could not compare to this single human. It must be said that the members of the ancestral folk tribe were beings who were much more spiritually in tune with the rules of this world than humans. They were so talented and powerful that they were the only ones that even demons avoided, for even weak youngsters of this race could kill powerful beings of the demon race. With the light abilities that the members of this race possessed, it was easy for them to wipe out the darkness of an individual. In addition to the ability to manipulate the element of light, they also had special abilities, just like humans, demons, hybrids, and beasts. However, even the weakest of the ancestral races would be born with an awakened ability of at least silver grade. But a noble woman like that level 22 woman, who could reach the fifth stage, was born with much more refined abilities. Even at level 22, she was sure she could compete with common level 24 sages. But in front of Lothur, she felt the terror of this guy's power and couldn't help but fear him, feeling that even the five members of her group would have a hard time facing him. Dinosaur, what are you doing with these people? Are you betraying our tribe? Another one of those beings from the sovereign race of the area asked in a threatening tone. Lothur heard this and clenched his fists. You followed us quietly and saw that we were only leaving the area, but you still act as if we are enemies. If you want to invent an enemy to fight, then fight. No. This dinosaur felt that if he didn't stop this, the ancestral folk would hunt down his group, and any chance they had to hunt demons in peace would be over. Elders, we will only hunt our enemies outside the ancestral region. My friends have only come to me to gather us together, and then we will leave together. He shouted as he saw the two sides of the conflict move. Lothur's women were already at his side. At the same time, these individuals held weapons in their hands, glowing as the element of light contrasted with the darkness in the young Ritter's hands. But they didn't stop at just one dinosaur's scream. Both sides ignored the Tyrannosaurus Rex's comments and attacked each other, setting up a confrontation between light and darkness. But no matter how strong the light of these creatures was, Lothur was too powerful for them to overcome with only the weakness of darkness on their side. With the help of his women, Lothur, though attacked by several of these people, felt only his defenses and personal traits working in defense of his being. In the midst of it all, the system revealed itself. Abnormal conditions detected in host's arms, back, and abdomen. Emergency measures initiated. Chapter 796 Creation of Life
Iron grade light resistance acquired. Progress, 89%. Dot. While Lothur's women were forced away from him by just two of the five enemies who had suddenly appeared in that place, the other three attacked him with all the light they had. Upon seeing Lothur using black flames a few moments ago, those individuals immediately changed their strategy to destroy this human. As a human who relied on soul bones, if a single one of those bones were destroyed, Lothur would be in a terrible state. However, as difficult as it was to do this, there was a relatively easy way to go about it. That was by counteracting the essence of a given soul bone present in that body. It wasn't easy to do this, as one would have to have a very high elemental affinity towards the nemesis element of the one behind that soul bone's powers. At the same time, soul bones usually depended on more than one element to function, which made the process even more difficult. But the bone responsible for Lothur's black flames was different. It was a mass of practically pure darkness. If they used their light together, those three could affect this soul bone. As much as a being could coexist with light and darkness in their body, that was true for the power of one's soul, not necessarily their bone. If your bone could not coexist with the opposite element it was based on, it would naturally implode, injuring its user and ceasing to exist. The ancestral folk were the ones who had the most knowledge about this, and when those three noticed Lothur's power, they immediately took this path to defeat him. Lothur's four women were powerful, but unlike Lothur, who had a set of platinum-grade bones, those women had silver, gold and platinum-grade bones, something far inferior to what he had. As such, even though they were on the same level as him, none could stand up to the powerful members of the continent's most talented race. Just two of those individuals were enough to separate them from Lothur and prevent them from helping him while he was being attacked mercilessly by those three. Even the dinosaur couldn't do much for him at the moment, as he was frozen in place, pressed down by the auras of those creatures of higher rank than his. One of the reasons the ancestral folk were so strong and had the whole region under their wing was because of their genetic superiority to the other beings in the area. Through this superiority, they could use a mere glance to make a beast like Psycat unable to move. This wasn't possible if the beast in question was stronger than the one using this ability. Yet, as Psycad was the weakest in the area, he Lothur. He muttered between his teeth, very apprehensive. Silver grade light resistance. Had fared badly in this situation. As such, he could only watch as Lothur was mercilessly attacked by the three strongest members of the enemy group. Lothur. He muttered between his teeth, very apprehensive. Silver grade light resistance. Progress. 3% dot. Progress, 28%. While being attacked by the three, Lothur let his super regeneration protect his body, while he didn't counterattack the three. Lothur merely left his black flames active, trying to look like someone who was doing his best to protect himself from enemy attacks. He was doing so well that his own companions watching him couldn't help but fear for him afraid that the light of these individuals would destroy the darkness in Lothur. But he was letting them attack him, feeling a new characteristic being born within his being. Do you think your light is going to destroy my platinum-grade soul bone? Lothur smiled. It could happen before, but with a 70% formed spirit body and all the bones at platinum grade, my body is as strong as armor. Only something of diamond grade could put me at risk like that. As he thought about it, he saw the laws behind these creatures' light power more and more clearly, understanding how they worked and how he could use them. Gold Grade Light Resistance Progress, 1% dot. Progress, 11% Suddenly, the system changed its messages, and a big smile formed on Lothur's lips. Affinity with darkness and light led to the creation of a unique ability, the miracle of life. Miracle of life, it can be used to heal, treat, regenerate, and create life. It can also be used for the opposite. Feeling something new rising up inside him, Lothur stopped pretending and started laughing loudly, making the three beings attacking him change their expressions to look at him more attentively. Ancestral folk, thank you. You've not only given me a new capacity but also a new skill. 
he said to everyone in the area as he stopped using black flames and made a white glow appear in his hands. Seeing this, the strongest of Lothur's enemies in the area narrowed his eyes, feeling a bad sensation. Immediately after this change, white flames appeared in Lothur's hands, and all three felt something sucking at their essences as they directed their light at their target. Damn it! The bastards absorbing our light! One of them shouted as he severed his connection with that attack, seeing that Lothur was only getting stronger as he was attacked. But Lothur had already stolen enough of these beings' light to reach 60% progress in his resistance to light. Not only that, when he used the miracle of life for the first time, he stole part of their essence and now had something in his hands that he couldn't absorb. Noticing this, he immediately used his creativity and created life. From the union of darkness and light, death and life, stand up and breathe, my children. He said aloud as he placed his hands on the ground. A few moments later, roots and earth moved rapidly, creating two small creatures inside a cocoon. The members of the ancestral folk there saw this with white eyes, badly wounded by Lothur's blow, but much more shocked to see something so forbidden happening in front of them. Gulp! Just as one of them was thinking of stopping it, the two cocoons broke, and something moved inside them. It can't be. As one of them shouted this, a feline paw appeared out of the cocoon before a small being with a cat's body, a kitten, appeared there, looking at itself without really understanding what was happening. Then, looking at its creator along with its brother, the creature immediately changed the lost look on its face, welding a long meow as it jumped towards Lothur. Meow. But this was no simple meow. When the two creatures did that, everyone in the area, including Lothur's women, felt as if lightning had struck, while the tension in the area increased several times. As cute as they were, those two furry creatures seemed to bring death with them. Chapter 797, The Powers of Lothur's Creations Abomination One of the strongest members of the ancestral folk cried out to Lothur as he felt the intense pain of having part of his elements stolen by the enemy. According to ancient legends, it was possible to create life after reaching the fifth stage and fulfilling certain conditions. However, this life would be almost 100% without a soul, just the outer carcass. A being created in this way would do things that someone with a soul would never do, which was terrible for the world as a whole. If told to kill, such a being would do so indiscriminately. It wouldn't look at babies and think about sparing them. It would think only of fulfilling its given mission, and it would kill everyone in its path. But apart from being incomplete in this sense, these creations were perfectly compatible with living beings similar to them in the sense of reproduction. Thus, an age-old question arose, what would result from the reproduction of an artificially created being and a naturally born being? These creations could reproduce with natural beings, which made everything problematic, as they could easily mix their characteristics with those of other races, leading to unimaginable problems. There were countless negative implications to this subject, and that's why the sages had not created life since ancient times. That was considered a huge taboo. But Lothur had created two little creatures as soon as he could, not hesitating to bring two abominations into the world. Those kittens beside him were not normal. As cute and small as they were, they had fantastical powers that newly created beings shouldn't have. Humans had to grow up and endure many challenges before they reached the point where they would be as strong as sages. Power didn't come to them without a lot of effort and learning opportunities. But these two creatures were already born with power, even though they hadn't had any effort or chance to learn the ways of this world. As a result, even Lothur's dinosaur ally couldn't help but stare in awe at the two little fur balls. But while these creatures stared at him, Lothur quickly imparted some of his knowledge to them, something any sage could do with a mere touch. As he did so, Lothur told them both. Eliminate my enemies. With this command from their creator, the two didn't hesitate to move. They crossed the space so quickly that the three creatures who had just attacked Lothur didn't see the two kittens appearing on their backs. As they were startled to see the speed of these monstrous creatures, the kittens' eyes changed, 
and they looked at those three so coldly that they could feel a chill in their souls. But these little creatures weren't just watching. As Lothur's creations, they had some of his traits to a lesser degree. Sharing some of the life devourer but also the black flames, these creatures had been born with a special ability, the Soul Eater. When they appeared behind their creator's targets, they looked directly at the essence of those three individuals and saw a bright pile of different colors floating around their bodies. They subtly opened their small mouths and licked their lips, their mouths drooling. You shouldn't have acted against our creator. One of them said in his target's mind, making him look even more terrified. Gulp. Can they think? Not only that, but can they transmit their thoughts? The ancestral folk member looked at the creature that turned into a trail of light as it flew toward him, feeling helpless in front of the kitten. The legends said that these creatures were incapable of thinking. But Lothur's creations were clearly capable of it. What did that mean? Were they even worse than the abominations described in the legends? Or were they not? Whether it was a good thing, it was something these beings didn't have to worry about. Being attacked so quickly by those kittens, two felt their chests pierced. But instead of blood, they realized they were losing something else. It was their soul. By losing blood, one would gradually lose consciousness. But by losing parts of their soul, they would not only be unable to move, but they would also see everything happening while feeling as if someone was devouring them bit by bit. It was the worst feeling a living being could feel something that two of these individuals had to deal with quickly in their last moments in this world. Lothur's creations were one level weaker than him. However, with their special characteristics and weakened enemies, they managed to kill two of the first three targets in a matter of seconds. Seeing this while using his visual ability, Lothur understood a little more about these creatures while smiling at his opponent's mistakes. Aside from seeing that these creatures had a little bit of each of his abilities, Lothur also noticed that although the creatures his creations were concerned about didn't have souls, they had that part within them. Their souls were small, like the souls of babies, but they were in their bodies. Not only that, as they devoured the souls of those ancestral folk people, their souls slowly grew stronger, increasing in size, brightness, color type, and so on. Incredible! They have a whole new power but it's obviously mainly derived from two of my abilities. But their eyes can also see things that mine can, and their bodies are very refined. It seems that when I create life, I can create new abilities with different blends of my abilities. He watched them exterminate the third and fourth targets and felt that he could use his new ability, Miracle of Life, to create a variety of weapons and vary how much of his powers would be inherited by each. Thinking about how useful this could be for him to use against the many enemies he had on the continent, he carefully watched the actions of the two kittens while smiling. Meanwhile, the two cats killed the last of the five members of the ancestral folk who had followed their creator earlier, ending this incident while being strangely watched by their creator's women and also the Diranosaurus Rex. Gulp. This shouldn't have happened. Cycad couldn't stand the silence any longer and said it out loud fearing not only for these creatures but the entire ancestral folk tribe. Yes, but they attacked us first. If they had chased us, they would have seen what Lothur is sooner or later. Elk commented, feeling that they didn't have much of a choice. It had to happen sooner or later. Chapter 798, First Goal Miss Elk is right. Better to kill these bastards early than give them a chance to harm our creator. One of the two cats, now with a full belly, said this childishly, causing everyone there to look at her with white eyes. The other cat ignored the behavior of these people and said, My creator, we must leave. If we stay, the members of that race will catch up with us. We'd better go through one spatial rift and then another to throw off any possible investigators. Lothur's creations were far more intelligent than anyone could have expected. They didn't have many things on their minds and could easily focus on the problem at hand. When they had finished eliminating these creatures, all they could think about was the danger the group would be in if they delayed their escape. With this in mind, 
one of them had already devised a plan to distance his creator from this place and make himself inaccessible to the investigators who would be there in a few minutes. Hearing that, Lothur agreed. Let's move on to our previous destination. But what about them? Sycad asked, feeling a bit scared. Don't worry about them. They're not what you think. Lothur said before opening a spatial rift for his group. They all moved towards him when he did, while the two cats quickly climbed onto Lothur's shoulders and sat down. Lothur looked at them and decided to give them names. From now on, you will be called Smoke and you Blood. He said, naming them after the colors of the fur of these two adorable animals. One had dark red fur, the color of wine, while the other was completely gray. The two creatures loved to be named. After Lothur's words, they rubbed their little bodies against their creator's face in gratitude. Meanwhile, they quickly reached a place hundreds of kilometers away from where they had dealt with the members of the ancestral folk. Arriving in that area, Lothur once again opened a spatial rift, this time in a direction indicated by Sycad, to where he knew one of the groups of demons unobserved by humans, beasts, or fifth-stage demons would be. Doing so without delay, in less than ten minutes, Lothur had led his group out of the ancestral region and into the interior of the Pethi Empire, where it would be almost impossible for the ancestral folk to reach them. Arriving there, Lothur looked around and remembered the last time he had passed through this state when the local ruler was about to advance to the fifth stage. Where are we going, Sycad? Lothur asked. The Tyrannosaurus Rex looked around sensing where exactly Lothur had brought him. After a moment of silence, he answered. Let's head north. There's a group of fourth-stage demons in an area about two hours from where we are. Meanwhile, the two kittens looked around, scanning the area for enemies. Their defensive instincts regarding Lothur were excellent. Even without command, they scanned the area for their creator. If they saw something, they would act. But as the group began to move north, they stood on Lothur's shoulders, sensing nothing alarming on the path Sycad had indicated. Rebecca then asked the beast leading the way. Elder Sycad, why aren't these demons being watched? Wouldn't it be in the interest of those searching for Lothur to watch all demons? After all, they can all be used to strengthen him. Sycad continued to stare ahead but answered the woman. It is not that simple. Unlike us, the beings who are after Lothur don't know how his abilities work. For these sages, the young Ritter would have to devour his enemies and spend weeks absorbing their powers. At Lothur's level, he would need to devour a surreal amount of low-level beings, or a small amount of powerful ones, to become stronger. These sages keep an eye on these two extremes. They're watching for powerful demons that can give Lothur a lot of power at once, and they're also watching for news of possible massacres. As for the middle ground, they simply can't monitor that many beings at once. Since Lothur is less likely to go after these demons because they wouldn't make interesting bones for him, these sages only focus on the strongest. There weren't many sages on the continent, and some still had to investigate Lothur's possible tracks. If they relied solely on observations of possible disasters or hunts that he might have created, they might lose him altogether. Hybrids could also become stronger through cultivation. If Lothur was hiding in a cave and meditating, he could still grow stronger and become a greater threat to the continent. Because of this, some sages in the coalition against him had to search for his possible locations to avoid this possibility. And this, of course, reduced the number of demons being watched. Not only that but after Lothur's persecution began, the powers of the continent stopped hunting demons, which gave this tribe more courage to increase the number of these beings running around the continent. I have a location of more than 40 groups, but I'm sure the number of demon groups in the northern region alone is more than 200. No one is hunting them, and they are seizing the moment to pursue their hidden goals. With the hybrid threat in our world, few are watching the demons. In the case of the first groups we will attack they won't be watched by anyone but my people. He finished speaking, sure of this. Sycad had been studying and observing groups of demons for months. Recently, 
he had increased the number of groups under observation exponentially and noticed that several groups, like his, had stopped looking for demons to go after the hybrid. He himself had run several tests, approaching these groups with no intention of acting and without drawing the attention of his targets after noticing that no one was watching them. He could have done so with relative ease if he had wanted to act and kill those demons. Everyone in Lothur's group listened to these words, confident in what Sycad had done so far. Even though Sycad wasn't as strong as they were, he was much more experienced, and his tips were better than acting in the dark. So, the group flew north, hiding their cultivations to avoid attracting unnecessary attention. Flying at the maximum speed of level 20 saints, two hours after arriving in the Pethi Empire, they finally arrived near the group of five demons Sycad had chosen for Lothur to begin his journey. Chapter 799, No. Jesus. A few days later. After encountering the first group of demons selected by Sycad, Lothur's group acted quickly against these creatures, eliminating them in a matter of seconds without drawing unnecessary attention to themselves. These were only fourth stage demons so none of the soul bones they produced would be of any use to Lothur or his women. As such, those bones were kept for the Ritter family, while only Lothur could improve his attributes by using his skills on those targets. After that, the group continued with their plans, going after three more groups in the following days, killing a total of 20 demons between levels 19 and 20. With around 20,000 EVF points accumulated in those days, Lothur had already transformed them into more than 666 soul points slightly improving his power. His affinities, resistances and progress to his soul bones were all improved during these days. However, after killing the low-level demons, Lothur didn't achieve any significant advancement. In any case, he now had 20 soul bones in his spatial ring, and his soul power had improved somewhat. However, as they continued to deal with another group of demons, an important piece of information for the group reached them. Oh? So that's her. Sycad asked one of his men via spiritual transmission, then ended the call, surprised by the warning he had just received. It looks like we found your mother, Lothur, Sycad said as he put down his communication crystal and spoke of the information he had just received. Where is she? Is she all right? Lothur asked, wanting to repay what Fabian had done for him as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Lothur's women were also interested in Fabian, the mother of their man and an emperor demon. They had always treated demons as enemies to be exterminated. But Fabian's situation was different. She was Lothur's mother and somehow more able to relate to humans than other demons. To get to the point where she could have sex with a human and have his child, Fabienne had to be very different from those like her in the demon world. Because they expected this from their man's mother, these four wanted to meet her. Sycad replied. She is well. She's not far. She's currently in Norad territory, south of that area, near the border of Thazen. The group was currently in Rablis, having left the Pethi Empire earlier because the second of their targets in that state had approached an area under observation forcing them to move to the state further south. Since Sycad had plenty of exciting targets for Lothur to eliminate without putting their group in too much danger, they had simply moved on, not giving this defeat too much importance. In any case, they were only a few hours away from the area where Fabienne was supposed to be. Oh? Let's go right now. Lothur got up from where he sat next to his women near a campfire in the middle of the forest. It was night but none of them needed to stop to sleep at the level they were at. When they heard their creator and saw his women preparing to leave, the two cats left their observation posts around the area and joined Lothur before he began to move west. What are you going to do, Lothur? What are you going to do with your mother? Sycad asked with some interest. My mother may have saved my life. Without her, I would probably have been found by the people of the church after the secret realm of Lin province. Besides, even though she's an emperor demon, she's still young and at a low level. So, to pay for what she did to me, I'll help her become stronger. After that, 
I'll let her go her own way. As long as she doesn't go against my goals or act against my people, I won't persecute her. Hearing this, Sycad, who already knew how Lothur had made these four women so strong from their conversations over the past few days, made a strange expression as he looked at the women and then at him. You don't intend to. He muttered, making it clear to everyone what he had in mind. Even Lothur's women looked at him in anticipation of his answer, anxious to know if he would commit another sin and consume a meat he shouldn't. Lothur narrowed his eyes and said in a defensive tone. No, Jesus. No. What are you thinking? How can you think that about me? I have other ways to strengthen her. I don't have to sleep with my own mother. Lothur's women sighed when they heard this, while the Tyrannosaurus Rex smiled bitterly. I don't know, Lothur, I wouldn't judge. There are far worse things others would do in your place. The beast said. Lothur shook his head and said. I can strengthen her by stimulating her potential with pills and natural resources. Anyway, I'll help her with that, but whether she takes the chance or not is up to her. Demons also don't absorb resources as quickly as humans, so she won't become very strong quickly. It will only be enough for her to live among humans for a while. Lothur's mother was an emperor demon who was still at the transcendent level when he last saw her. But even though she was a being who could hide very well, until she became a saint, she would be quite vulnerable to human experts. Once she became a saint, it would be even easier for her to hide and live in society. Lothur wanted this for her, his way of repaying her for the life he had received from her. The Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't like that he had to let what Lothur wanted to happen, but if this young man left only Fabian alive, it wouldn't change his plans too much. If only one demon was left in this world after their action, it would be impossible for the demon race to rise again. Even demons needed two genders to reproduce. Moreover, a demon who gave birth to a hybrid would never be able to conceive again, so Sycad continued to lead the way without worrying too much about Fabian. Chapter 800, Strong Connection Hours later, Lothur's group would reach the area of the Norad Empire near the border with Thazen. Arriving in this area, Lothur took the group's lead by using his investigative skills, something he had been doing for the past few days whenever his group got close to their targets. With a skill as good as Lothur's, their group could review their targets' locations in real time and check for possible enemies without causing a disturbance. Sycad's men had helped the group a lot over the last few days, but it was also because of Lothur's skill that they had managed to reach this place without facing any problems since leaving the ancestral region. So, after Lothur had investigated the area for a few minutes, he would find his mother's group not far from where he had stopped to investigate, finally leading his people to where Fabienne was. Fabienne's group was camped near a lake, and only two of the demons in her group were watching the area. Arriving there with his group, Lothur changed his appearance back to his original one, immediately attracting the gaze of these two low-ranking beings in the demon world. Seeing who was there, the two demons on guard had smiles on their faces and promptly knelt down when faced with their leader's son. Lothur. They said simultaneously, remembering the day they had rescued this young man from envoys of the Leopoldine family who were taking him to the imperial prison. When they spoke Lothur's name simultaneously, Fabian and the rest of her group immediately woke up from their rest or their meditations. After leaving her tent, Fabian saw her son's face again after months of worry. However, she also noticed his group, which contained not only humans but also three beasts. The other members of her group observed the rest of the group with some uncertainty, unable to say for sure the level of cultivation of these beings. With everyone in Lothur's group hiding their cultivation, there was no way these third and fourth stage beings could probe their strength. But Lothur's group could easily tell the strength of these beings, while young Ritter could see his mother's status. Name, Fabian Vazrat. Soul Cultivation, Level 19. Body Cultivation, Level 18. STR, 825 con, 910 dex, 864 AGI, 848. Int, 944 per, 
774 will, 692 su, 999. You've leveled up since the last time we met, Lothur commented as he looked at Fabian. Fabian looked at Lothur, already aware that he had managed to escape from the Imperial prison, or there wouldn't have been so many reports of hybrids on the loose on the continent. Monarch Hierarchy asked while looking toward Lothur's women and the dinosaur. She walked to his side as she said. That doesn't compare to what you've achieved. Congratulations on becoming a sage, Lothur. You make me very proud to have given birth to you. And who are these, young master? One of the demons of the monarch hierarchy asked while looking toward Lothur's women and the dinosaur. Judging by the position of the two cats on Lothur's shoulders, it was obvious that these red and grey fur balls were his beasts. Lothur then introduced his group. This Tyrannosaurus Rex is a friend of mine who helped me a lot on my journey. As for these humans, they are my women. With that said, they each introduced themselves, saying their names and greeting Fabienne one by one. Fabienne wasn't surprised that her son had gathered so many women, but she was pleased they had all reached the fifth stage. Together, they could face this world and stand a chance of survival. You make a beautiful family. I'm glad you're together. She said to the girls before looking at Lothur and asking. But I'm curious about these two adorable creatures. I get an awful feeling from them. The others there felt the same way, even more negatively affected by those cats than by the great beast in Lothur's group that looked at them as if he would attack them at any moment. Lothur looked at one of the two creatures and laughed. These are my creations, blood and smoke. I created them. They didn't quite understand what Lothur meant. His words to almost all of them meant that he had been taking care of these kittens since they were born. But Fabienne was different from the rest of her group. With a high-level lineage and being the one with the highest cultivation among the demons in her group, she could sense that Lothur's words had a deeper meaning. Did he really do that? She wondered as she looked at one of those cats, thinking of the taboo that even demons avoided committing. But as a sinner herself, she could not judge her son. Are you sure about them? She asked him. Of course. Then that's what matters. Nothing else matters if they won't harm you and your group. She said with a sigh of relief. But then she changed the subject. So, what brought you here? As the mother of a hybrid, Fabienne was ready to give her soul bone to Lothur whenever he decided to absorb her powers. The same was true for the group of demons under her command, who had decided to do so on the day of Lothur's birth. Lothur then said. I am here to help you. You saved my life back there, so I think I should help you get stronger. Don't worry about that, Lothur. My purpose is for you to become as strong as possible. You don't have to do anything for me. She said as the demons in the area nodded their heads in agreement. The commitment of these beings to the hybrid they had helped to protect and create was so great that Cycad couldn't help but be impressed, seeing for the first time some of the legends about these beings. Hybrids are so terrible that they are able to affect the lives of those around them before they are even born. Cycad thought as he looked at Lothur. Those who see a hybrid being born will never be able to turn against it. Once you watch the birth of such a creature, you will be bewitched to live only for the hybrid and be ready to sacrifice yourself for it at any time. Seeing that the legends were not untrue, on the contrary, they portrayed things as they were, this dinosaur took a deep breath and noticed the strange determination of these beings. Seeing this, he didn't even feel like killing these demons. They had already lost their essence and would do whatever the hybrid they had helped to create decided. Hi guys! To access more audiobooks of this novel, become a member on Ko-fi.